Hey guys, and welcome to a, another English eating live stream with, of course, Connors from Magload and myself, Callum, from English Shooting. He didn't just momentarily forget my name there, don't worry. <laughs> how can I, I forget your name? <laughs> Spend too, uh, too many hours a day with you. Yeah. Um, so tonight, there are actually quite a few things to discuss. Obviously, we're going to talk about the election. Uh, I'm sure you're all bored with it by now, so we're going to leave that till later on in the stream. But there are a number of things, as I said, um, some new experiences for both Connors and I as well to, to relate yeah, to you guys. Yeah. Uh, as always, hit us with your uh, questions. We're trying to keep on top of them, try and answer as many as possible. And we are, of course, in the Bluefield Sports Gun Room. So any guns that you particularly <laughs> want to see or ask questions of, or you're interested in, well, just ask and we'll get them off the wall. Um, yeah. go, go diving in the armory. Yeah, fantastic. So uh, there is a bit of news, not necessarily UK specific, but I'm sure you're all aware of, which is the new Glock 2.2 yeah. or the Glock 44. Well, this has been making waves, hasn't it? So yeah. Glock have decided to release their own 2.2 LR pistol after so many other people have been doing it <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> for quite a while. Well, on, on that note, actually, if we're going to be talking about it, we've got to well, bring up... So before before we get that, so Glock's... Um, Glock's uh, the Glock 44, the 2.2 LR, yep. is a polymer and steel slide, I'm assuming, to reduce the weight for proper cycling. Um, so what Callum's got here is the Calibre Innovations CIP 2.2, which is a Gen 3 Glock lower, not a Glock and earn advantage arms upper with their own custom barrel assembly. So it's a known working combo that is uh, regularly used and it, with police. It is a genuine Glock frame. We have Glock had this on the... Well, it the, the whole thing might not be called a Glock, but it is a Glock, uh, Glock frame. We have talked about it on the channel before, but at the moment, if you want a Glock in the UK, this is your option. Mm -hmm. There is the Cactus Arms... Um, Glock, not a Glock, coming out. Um, we... Well, theirs, theirs is actually not a Glock. It's a built from the ground up. Yes. So. Um, but yes, with the announcement of the new uh, Glock 44, a lot of people have already been asking, well, are we going to see a long barrel version within the UK? Uh, and I think straight off the bat, it's if it is going to happen, it's going to be a very long way off. So here's, here's my feelings on that. So... We've seen big companies come out with uh, long barrel pistols, um, such as Walther. Um, they they went to the effort, they made a long barrel pistol, and having worked on this gun, I can tell you it's not a straight up PPQ. It, it has some tweaks and some changes. So they've spent some time to make this a gun that works. Um, it has some slight internal differences even to a uh, 2.2 P, uh, Wolf PPQ. But it comes but, out, yeah. out of the factory from Wolfer, which yeah. I think is, is a big point of the reliability of the gun. It is, in my opinion, the most reliable long barrel pistol on the market. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and it would be really nice to see Glock do a long barrel pistol. I, I have my doubts as to whether or not they will. I really don't think they will. It's about market. It's about the size of the market in the UK. And, you know, as far as we're aware with the PPQ, they've brought in maybe, well, I think two to four hundred of these for Glock that is just baby numbers for them yeah. and, and it really isn't going to be worth them developing it if you really are interested in a in a Glock 44 22 long barrel pistol for the UK market the best thing for you to do is to petition Glock go onto their website send them an email get in contact with them and if they have enough people it may pique their interest yeah. and not forgetting that Walther is no small a gun manufacturer and obviously they thought it was worth it to make um, an LVP for the UK market. Mm -hmm. I just still don't think Glock, you know, it's it's not really their, their remit. They, they're mainly no. the American and, and international. Well, here's the thing is actually, so Glock released guns for police, for military, for uh, civilian sort of self-defense use. But I actually fail to see what market they are trying to hit. Now I know what sort of market will buy mm -hmm. the 22LR but it seems very much outside of Glock's usual demographic. Maybe that's the point. Well, they're certainly more um, used to the service pistol, aren't they? They're, you know, guns for jobs, so police forces, military, so on and so forth, so self-defense. Yeah. But there is a, a big push at the moment with Team Glock. They have some top-level, you know, world-class shooters, and they are seemingly getting bigger and bigger in the sporting mm -hmm. market. 
obviously, you know, with their main market being home defence and, and law enforcement, you know, like the Advantage Arms Upper um, or Slide even, they have that. That's come about because of training. It's yeah. a lot cheaper to shoot 2.2 versus 9mm. Mm -hmm. uh, and certainly introducing new people, and there's not a huge amount of recoil with 9mm, but if someone's never fired a pistol before, starting them off at 2.2 is going to be a lot safer. Well, in, in, when you're teaching fresh people to shoot a, a handgun, mm -hmm. there is a tendency for them to have recoil French, and yep. a really good way to get over that, especially if you're trying to get a police officer trained up very, very quickly, is to start off with a 2.2. Two. So Absolutely. that's why Advantage Arms exist, or rather this, this upper exists, is to convert. Yeah. Um, so I think Glock have probably looked at it, you know, I, I don't think they're necessarily paying attention to the long barrel pistol market here, no. but I think they're certainly paying attention in the UK, to uh, in international market, and certainly the US, which is new shooters, beginner mm -hmm. shooters. And, and I would actually go as far to say the, um, the female shooter market, ones that you know may not be that comfortable with a gun if it's a 2-2 they, they get it started they get used to the glock platform um, and then they progress and then they go and buy other higher caliber well, well, i wouldn't say specifically uh female shooters but certainly people of a slimmer build such as callum um, <laughs> they, they definitely need to start off on a 2-2 um there's there's a few questions coming in already uh so so, how do you how do you shoot a gun with with a stick on the back? Well, there are limitations in competition. Um, you cannot really safely go prone with this because that stick gets in the way, and then you're fighting with the stick. Um, coming in and out of apertures, you have to be very aware when you bring a gun back. You don't stab yourself in the chest with the thing. Mm -hmm. It makes competition very very difficult, but it, it's what well, we have to work with. When I had the GSG nineteen eleven, it didn't have a, a too dissimilar rod coming out of the back of it and actually shooting it you don't notice so you get your grip and it's not actually anywhere near your arm it mm -hmm. you know even if you get it underneath there's usually a bit of gap but if you have a proper grip on it it's it's way it's out of the way it doesn't interfere yeah. um uh, here we go an actual gsc this GSC. is actually the, the mark one um i bought the mark two uh but again it had the very similar uh rod and counterbalance on it and again if you get a, a good grip on it it's nowhere near your arm so because it's a long barrel pistol and you have the extra weight out front, the counterbalance does make the gun a lot more balanced. So it's it does actually aid it. And certainly yeah. with the long barrel revolvers, the um, the Taurus, which unfortunately yeah. isn't available anymore, it actually has an arm brace. And a lot of gallery shooters will use it for single hand shots to brace against their arm. So it doesn't actually... It's, it's cheating, really. It, it is a little bit <laughs> cheating. Um, but it's not really um, a minus. It's very much a, a plus. And actually, here, we have a Taurus so here. Here's the Taurus. The arm brace is, is it's kind of in the wrong position, but I think people probably bend it up and down um, to, to suit themselves. Yeah. But yeah, this is this is an off-the-shelf uh, revolver with, with an arm brace stuck to the back of it. Is what it is. Seven shots, which is nice. Um, and, and again, a, something like that. a lot of Americans and international shooters will be watching this going, oh, you poor Brits. Well, <laughs> um, unfortunately, this is the, the closest we can have to a handgun in the UK. And whilst a lot of uh, ex-pistol shooters before the ban here in, in the UK, well, England, Scotland and Wales, to, to be perfectly correct, mm -hmm. um, they will not go anywhere near them out of principle. You know, they, they feel that they should have never had their proper pistols taken away and they're yep. not going to curtail to having a rod on the end of it. But for a lot of shooters, it is the only way to, to mm -hmm. train for, for handguns in the UK um, and to even shoot them. Yeah. Uh, to the person asking, so Carl Volt asking, can an RFD or a licensed dealer make LBPs with 80% frames and off the shelf 2.2 kits with a longer barrel? So what Calibre have done here is they've taken a full 100% frame a 2.2 upper and then manufactured the barrel. That's absolutely fine. Um, there may be legal issues um, with importing 80%, so yeah. you need to be very aware of that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna chip in now. Yep. The, the legal issue is it can never have been fired or used as a nine mil before. Yeah, so, but so, so an 80% frame would certainly meet that. There, meet that. there was a bit of um, oh, argument about this specific gun, the, the CIP 2.2. Glock never sells component parts. They don't sell the frame separately. And a lot of people 
jump to the conclusion that the only way to actually get a genuine Glock frame was to buy a Glock pistol, strip everything else off of it, and then convert it to 2.2. Two. Now, we're still not 100% sure well, how well, David managed to do it. From... But the, the manufacturer, the manufacturers themselves have told us that yes. they were surplus, unused, yep unregistered frames and that's what makes it legal the frame was never assembled as a, a short arm um, to, to quote our laws it was just the frame it was a component part and therefore if you make if if the first time it becomes a registered or licensed firearm is in the long barreled or section one configuration then it becomes UK legal um, and I actually had a, a really good chat with the late Mike Jakes of um, Icon Arms who developed the uh, the SIG uh, IP226, and he was releasing that gun, I think, around the £1,800 mark, and explained that you know, if you go to BMW and you buy every single part one by one and then <laughs> assemble the car, it's going to cost you a lot more than just going and buying the car in a showroom. And because of our laws, he wasn't able to bring in a normal SIG and then make it into 2.2 because... Once it's been Section 5 in our laws, it's yep. always been Section 5. So he had to buy all the component parts, which is why some of these guns are very expensive. You know, the Glock is £1,500 because of the way that it's had to be mm. built. The reason that the likes of the uh, PPQ is a lot cheaper at seven to £800 is because Walther, as the manufacturer, is making these in the factory. So you're getting that you know made-up price rather than yeah. the component actually, part price. The PPQ is quite a nice gun in that it feels identical to the real thing. Mm -hmm. It has a very, very light um, stick out the back. Yep. Obviously, we've got the carbon shroud on here, which removes that steel shroud at the front, and it just balances just like the real thing. I mean, the real thing is quite a light gun too, but it's, it's really nice to operate. It feels like the real thing, because when we've gone out to Prague yep. and shot the five inch PPQ out there, we could transfer all the same skills over straight um, away. I've, I've just noticed, I'm just gonna go and tweak the camera a little bit, because I think it's slightly out of focus. So while I'm doing that, why don't you explain what's on the end of that? Okay, so um, as some of you may or may not know, Maglode has developed a, uh, a We've developed a muzzle brake optimised for 2.2. We managed to make use of the small amount of gases that a 2.2 rim 5k uh, round produces and actually um, make a, an effective compensator out of it. We have tested and have been testing this uh, compensator slash brake for the PPQ. It's been working wonders. So we are bringing one out that's actually directly compatible with our existing carbon shrouds. And what we'll also be doing is a bundle deal for the two once they are ready to go. And, and the shroud in itself, we, I think we've talked about it on the stream before, but if you have a PPQ or you're thinking about getting one in the future, the shroud absolutely transforms the gun. With the original shroud, which I believe is steel. It's steel and you've got that massive steel nut on the end as well. It makes it very, very front mm. heavy. And the, the carbon trail just makes it perfectly balanced. You, you are adding, I think... You so, so, so we weighed it. So the original yeah. nut is 1.4 grams. Yeah. And the brake is 6.5 grams. So you're adding 5 grams out to the end of the muzzle. And, and, I, can't, and I can say, handling it in the gun room and having a feel, you don't notice it. It might, might look a bit big and bulky. Uh, but yeah. we've also had Alex Florence, who is, of course, the NRA standard champion, mm -hmm. um, and he won that championship with, or won the league with a PPQ. And a carbon shroud. And a carbon shroud. <laughs> he, um, he's taken the break out and he's, well, it's not coming off of his gun anytime well, soon. His comment was, it makes my CCI mini mag feel like CCI standard. Yeah. That was his comment, word for word. Um, so it's, you know. So yeah, we're, I'm going to be, I'm really excited to bring this through. This is a two piece break uh, that's on here at the moment, much like the uh, UNF and UNEF one that we sell. Um, we're actually going to be moving to a one-piece break just to make use of the short amount of thread engagement that's on the uh, end of the muzzle there. So there's a PPQ which isn't available now, but there is the um, the UNF threaded, which uh, is specifically for the Ruger 1022 and other, obviously, UNF threaded guns. And then, of course, the UNEF threaded guns, which is yep. for the 2.2 AR-15s. Yes. Um, and a quick plug for Connors, they're available from maglo.co.uk, <laughs> yep. um, so if go and check that if website you want, out. If you want to have a genuine 
polymer, high-tech, 3D printed uh, compensator for your gun. It's there and it's available. And I think we, we previewed it again in the last stream, but Connor's actually went out and put 500 rounds within mm. five, 10 minutes through one of these brakes and it's standard up to the punishment. Yeah. Absolutely no problem. But that's probably enough on long barrel pistols and certainly yeah, the Yeah, let's, let's get rid of these because they're, they're, <laughs> they're clogging up the space. Yeah, um, and we're just gonna have a quick look. That, that's a Glock, man, it doesn't go to the key. Oh, no. There we go. Get rid of some guns and the Taurus as well. Oh, don't get rid of the guns. <laughs> yeah. um, and just have a quick look at what you guys are saying. Again, hit those, um, so, uh, Hit those comments and questions. Ro Roblox Bear 52 is asking, uh, in England, what do you do if you're getting mugged by criminals but your country doesn't legally have concealed carry? You get robbed. <laughs> That's what happens. A uh, quick um, <laughs> hello to Neil from Rack and Load. I'm sure he will be going on about his £75 Mossberg very shortly. Um, and a hello <laughs> to Paul from the World Gun Owners Association, a great group focusing all around... Um, firearms across the world, hence the name, everything from American self-defense out in there and mm -hmm. obviously UK laws as well. There is a bit of a conversation going on between Aaron and Neil at the moment about whether or not you should get a 308 or a 65 Creedmoor. Um, <laughs> I will say, unless you can grow a beard like this, you can't yeah. have a 65 Creedmoor. So, uh, I'm, tr I'm he's trying. trying, he's getting I'm, there. I'm, I'm, I'm going to pass my probation. Well, the, the cat approves of your beard, that's for sure. Yeah, I got, I got mauled the other day by the cat, which I'm sure will appear at some time and get, get in the frame. Um, and Neil's actually saying, uh, let's talk Kentucky, which of course, both Connors and I will be going out with American shooting trips out in April. I believe there is still time to get booked onto that. Yep. So go on to americanshootingtrips.com if you are interested. I made a video on the channel a few weeks back, so that mm -hmm. has a lot of details in it. But Neil is actually coming out with us as well. So we're having a road trip um, along with... Um, it's going to get smelly. It's going to get very smelly. <laughs> we've, uh, we've got Dan Smerald, who was on the stream um, two weeks ago, uh, and we're going to be driving down from Chicago all the way down to Kentucky. Uh, we're going to plan uh, a few stops there, gun-related mm -hmm. stops, of course, yep. gun shops, ranges, um, and anything else we can fit in between. So it's going to be an amazing trip for content for you guys on the channel. We're going to try and share absolutely every well, minute of it. We're going to be running an IPSC match out there as well as uh, three gun and other outlaw matches, yep. so it should be pretty good fun. So it's, it's going to be a great road trip. That in itself is going to be um, pretty spectacular. And then a whole week of shooting, structured, as you said, IPSC matches and three gun matches. Mm -hmm. But there's also going to be machine gun shooting. Uh, David, who runs the American Shooting Trips um, company, they yeah, he was telling me that he was just going through the shopping list of machine guns <laughs> for the trip. So I'm sure there's going to be a nice selection out there for us. It should us. be good because I've, I've never shot a fully auto gun before. Which, which I think is crazy. But then being in the UK, when do you get the opportunity yeah. well, to I've shoot I've never auto? been to America. I've never been to yeah. a country where full, full auto is illegal. For, I mean, I think it's a law, for, actually. Yeah. If you go out to America, you have to shoot one. So. <laughs> well, it's going to be a first, <laughs> first trip to America as well. So I'm looking forward to the uh, portion sizes. Oh, yes. <laughs> that, that, that might even shock you. Okay. <laughs> right, we'll, we'll see about that. I'll take that time. Customs, eh? No, no, <laughs> cust customs could be could be fun. Again, I, I, I'm on that note. I don't know if I've talked about it before on the channel, but um, I, I had an interesting welcome home a few years ago, uh, coming back from America. Again, another American shooting trip. Uh, we believe someone had phoned in or tipped off customs saying that people were bringing through gun parts which in all honesty we were, just nothing licensed or restricted. Um, five hours later uh, in customs, um, <laughs> I was a little bit grouchy, a little bit grumpy, but everything was okay. We managed to leave with everything that we, uh, we arrived with. Uh, but it, it did sort of, for me, drive home how stringent they are, how well they are you know, looking out for things, because it is a big avenue for people to try and bring in illegal parts. And actually, more recently, there was um, the case of a family... I, th I think, again, bringing stuff through their suitcases from mm -hmm. America, all different Glock components. So it, it does happen, and it's good that they're watching out for it, because whilst we uh, appreciate firearms and guns, <laughs> we certainly don't want illegal firearms being out there, that's for sure. So, again, keep the, the questions coming, um, and we will do our best to answer them. So uh, how about Aaron T's question? How expensive is it to get into shooting in the UK? It's as expensive as you want to make it. Yeah. It, that's like a how long's a piece of string answer, which is never helpful. Well, put it this way, my, you know, FAC costs, what, is it 80 quid now? So it's around 80, 80, 80 pounds, and if you're going for an FAC and you already don't have an, an SGC, 
go for the core terminus. It works mm -hmm. out far better. I think they're around the 90 to 100 yeah. pound mark. That's a set cost. So you, you apply for that, you've got it for five years, and then just get, you can go out bargain hunting. Because yeah. if you've got a shotgun certificate, there are plenty of 50 to 75 pound shotguns out Absolutely. there, which yeah, will yeah. serve you just fine. And, and um, I, I had a friend yeah. um, buy a Zabala, and I think that he literally went into Portsmouth Gun Centre, says, I've got 200 quid burning a hole in my, it might be three, two or 300 quid. And the gun shoots like a Bretta Silver Pigeon. Yes, it's not as nice, but it's a sturdy gun. It will do what, what he wants. Well, my Ruger 1022, I picked up for 25 pounds, yeah. including a 25 round magazine. Yeah. So there you, are bargains to be had. And <laughs> to be fair, I reckon you could get into shooting for less than 200 quid. Well, yeah, you until just, you start buying ammunition. <laughs> yeah. Well, if, if you if, if you want to say, let's say two twos, so you want to go out and get a Ruger 1022, you can probably pick one on the set. Pick one up on the second mm -hmm. hand, hand market between 100 to 200 quid, like a fairly decent one all day long on Gun Trader. You're going to be spending, say, 80 to 100 pounds on your licensing. Mm -hmm. You're then going to be spending probably another 100 pounds on your safe. So, yeah, three to 400 pounds, that gets you your license, but, the gun. Again, there are always deals on gun safes. If you go on yeah. Facebook Marketplace and stuff, people will be having, having carrots. You, you don't have to buy quid. a specific yeah. gun gun safe like mm -hmm. most people will recommend it but any safe that will fit your guns and that will bolt to the wall and that is secure you know it's not made absolutely out of plastic and, and then i say the last cost and actually the first cost before you get your fac is um is getting a your full membership at a club mm -hmm. and a club like kentucky firearms club where they shoot everything under the sun it's 50 quid for the year the home office will charge me 60 did they? Yeah. Oh, I get the special discount. All right. <laughs> so they, or maybe it's because you're a new member. Maybe they're yeah. different. Yeah. But you, you're going to be talking anywhere between 50 quid and 100 quid. So I'd say all in all, you probably need to budget. Don't uh, forget about the cost of potentially of the GP's letter. That's a new thing. Yeah, but you shouldn't have to pay for that. You shouldn't have to, but a lot of, in, in a lot of areas, yeah. um, GPs have started charging for the letter, which is fair enough. It is technically private work, as much as a HGV driver would have to charge for it. The yep. problem comes when GPs go, we don't like guns, therefore it's going to cost you £500 for your letter. Which, which I've seen a couple of people do that. <laughs> there, there is a, I cannot for the life of me remember the, uh, the name of it, but there is an online medical certification website where they do all the different sign-offs, including for an FAC. I, I believe that is the cheapest way to do it privately. So if your GP starts taking the piss, go and find a, another website um, and you'll get it at a reasonable price. So mm -hmm. I'd probably budget in the region for, a, if you want to get into 2-2 shooting, probably between three and 500 pound, but it's not all at once. You're going to pay your membership. It's going to be three to six months until you're going to have to go out and get your license and mm -hmm. then you're safe. So it's all staggered. And then once you've got your license, you can wait another six months to a year to, to buy your gun, no problem. So you don't have to go and spend three, 500 quid straight away. You can stagger it. So it can be very, very affordable. Obviously, so, um, CJ's on here. Hi, CJ. He says it's called Medicert. Medicert. Thank you, CJ, uh, from the 617. So uh, CJ, if you guys don't know, is uh, part of the GTV team. Mm -hmm. um, He's been working very hard. He's doing definitely all the... the most skilled out of the GTV team. Oh, definitely, yeah. definitely. And um, he's been doing all of the uh, the interviews from the Target Shooting Show. So we have a very interesting one coming out. I think it will be going out tomorrow, which is actually Alan Westlake. So we've been talking about the long barrel <laughs> pistols. That would be a good one. Alan Westlake is the godfather of the long barrel pistol. He was the creator. We wouldn't have them without. No, him, he was the first person to take a Browning Buckmark rifle chop the stock off and put and uh, you know, adapt it into a pistol and those butt marks are still great guns today we have one up on the wall there yeah. but we're not getting any more pistols down for now because <laughs> we've seen enough of them um is full bore target shooting at bisley difficult to get into i don't no, know no comment um i, I, I don't know i don't well i i shot full bore at a brilliant club called dorking and district rifle club mm -hmm. which really isn't far from bisley so it depends what end of um which side of Bisley you're at, uh, Dorking is a really, really good club, nice people. It, personally, I think it's it's more difficult than it needs to be at Bisley, um, but it depends how you do it. As Connors was saying, you can do it through a club. So the first time I shot at Bisley was actually through my university uh, club. So I didn't have NRA membership, I'd never been to Bisley before, but as a club they went and rented lanes. So 
if your if your club is going to Bisley on a regular basis, or there's a local club to you that goes to Bisley, it's probably best to join them to get a taste. And I mean, the NRA membership is not expensive. When I joined, it was like 50, 60 quid. It's probably gone up a little bit since then. And you know, it gets you access to the whole Bisley facility. The the issue with Bisley is that if you don't have an FAC, it can be difficult and expensive if you go through the NRA route. I would always recommend going through a local club. Um, it works out a lot cheaper. Again, a club like Kentucky Firearms Club, they rent a variety of different bays at Bisley. So get in contact with them and they'll be able to sort you out. So it's, it's really about knowing the different avenues through to make it easier. But unfortunately, if you turn up at Bisley, you've never shot before, you're probably looking anywhere in the region to 500 to a £1,000 if you go the NRA route, which mm. personally I, I think is a bit too... I, th I think it's... Too well, steep. Yeah. I'm not going to get too political, but I don't think there should be such a large barrier to entry from the National Rifle Association. Mm -hmm. um, am I still des designing a Westlake cylinder holder for you? Well, I don't really tend to give out information on products that are really quite early in the development phase. That's, that's as good as a no comment. Um, <laughs> so, someone, uh, Gamekeeper Jack, best steel targets to buy. And I'm going to have to check with... Oh. Tom's, Tom's targets. targets. Yeah, all right. So he's made some really nice falling targets. And we have a... We, we have a oh, no, no, okay. So, so there's, there's two. Yeah. So Tom's targets for what he's asking for is, is good. It's so they're the steel gongs. They're the from, steel gongs yeah, yeah. and lots of different shades. Oh, yeah, no. I'm not thinking of Tom's. If you want plate racks. Yep. And, and IPSC then, targets. Then um, it's James Armstrong, but I can't remember his company. <laughs> Watch. Pra practical shooting targets, I think. Yeah, practical shooting targets. Um, if you go and watch the Gunroom TV video, the highlight video of the target shooting show, uh, he appears in that. Well, actually, both Tom targets and the other targets. Mm -hmm. So they both uh, they have slightly different markets from you know long range distance steel gongs and then plate racks. Um, but go and have a look at that video. You'll yeah, see so both of them. James Armstrong is doing some really good stuff with mm -hmm. um, falling targets with a string or a cord reset. Yeah. Um, it's looking really, really good because it's going to be uh, they're going to be IPSC plate racks, and we've asked them to make us something a little special. Which um, it's going to be down on the range, on. hopefully very soon. So you yeah. will see that on the channel and obviously on Gunroom TV uh, as well. So again, keep the questions coming, guys, and we will do our best and to keep get through them. Uh, try and find a second-hand Beretta Silver Pigeon. Yes. Um, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm slightly biased on that. My first shotgun was a Beretta Silver Pigeon, um, but you, you've you been using an ATA recently. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, I, I, can't, I can't say I'd recommend it. Um, no, I've been using the uh, DT-10, haven't I? Well, yeah, that's not really a starter shotgun. No, it's not. I mean, yeah. Do you want the ATA? There's 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 different the things. It's a cheap gun. It's a good gun. I mean, maybe I'm giving it a bit of stick because I had one failure to fire with it, where it was the gun's fault. Um, but the comparison is is I've never had a single problem with any of the either new or old Berettas I've used. Apart from when you ejected the trigger mechanism. Apart from when I ejected the trigger mechanism, that, that's user error. Yeah, so yeah, it's nothing, yeah. nothing to do with the gun. Uh, this gun. It fits me really, really well, so I shoot, I shoot quite well with it. Um, but it had that one, that one malfunction. Um, maybe I'm being too harsh on it. Really needs to probably have a bit more testing to give a, a full endorsement on it. Yeah, I mean, it's probably had 500 rounds through it. Tops. Yeah. I mean, brand new gun, 500 rounds, one failure. That's not too bad going. But I've never had a failure with my silver pigeon. No, not with the silver pigeon, not with the DT10, not with the double double L. But then, what? How? How much do these retail for, Alex? I think they're. So, I, think, so, I, think, I think they're eight hundred quid, aren't they? Yeah. So there's a seven eight hundred quid this, for a brand new gun, you know, off yeah. the shelf. You can go and pick up a silver pigeon for around eight hundred to a thousand pounds second hand, and I would highly recommend the silver pigeon. Yeah. Put the extra in and get it. Um, and here comes my silver pigeon. I, and um, I would also say for a gun, for a gun that's only had five hundred rounds for it, it shouldn't drop free quite as easily as it already does. It's. I uh, don't think this gun's going to last very long. But the Silver Pigeon, I've been shooting this for seven years. It's never let me down. I've done practical with it, clay with it, <laughs> pigeon shooting. I've gone out and done my first game shoot with it. Um, it really is just a staple gun. And I would, you know, uh, 15 or how much is sporting now? 1,700 pound. 
it's a lot of money for a gun. I managed to get a, a stonking deal. Um, I paid 1500 quid for the whole shebang. That was a thousand cartridges, case, cleaning kit, is eyes, all of that. Um, but that was seven years ago. But yeah, if you can save up and go and get a silver pigeon or even a Browning, again, it, it's like Some, Mercedes or BMW. So, Some so, people some, have. Yeah, something from a choices. big name, second hand, you can't really go wrong. Yeah, the, the, the caveat with the ATA is you shoot it for five years, it will fall apart and then it's worth zero. Yeah. You shoot with silver pigeon for the whole of your life and you give it to your children and it's still worth what you pay for it. Well, there, there will be a point, I'm pretty sure, where my silver pigeon, I might have to wait 20 or 30 years, but on the second hand market it will be worth what I paid for it new um, and that's it if you buy a decent gun to begin with which I'd always recommend doing you're not going to need to buy one again a few years later down the line um, so I think there's a bit of an argument going on uh, oh, over between what's pumpers and yeah, no, real, semis real, real men shoot pump guns that's, uh, that's just the way it is simple men do um, I've never I've... claimed to be a complicated person <laughs> I have claimed to be better at shooting than you though <laughs> uh, claim it's, it's a big claim um, so the thoughts on the Browning Synergy Black Ice um, to be honest I've not got hands on on it I can't really comment I'm not really a Browning guy Browning don't really turn me on to be honest um, it's, it's it's all about weird, the Bretta it's a very strange way of putting it well, guns are very pretty some guns are some, some you don't have any more, more credence to um, Sean O'Neill of Guns yeah. turn you on. <laughs> no, I always make the point that there there is a lot of mo emotion around guns, and people find same it same as a car. And that's same with a car. Yeah. I mean, people they are inanimate objects, but they have memories attached to them. There there are people that might not be here that are attached to them. Certainly with, with the likes of my granddad's shotgun and um, an air rifle, and you know having this you know emotion to a gun a lot of people think you're very weird but then again classic cars you know people have a car that was their dad's car and they've passed away and now they've got it you know it's it's very hard to explain to some people but i think mm -hmm. as gun guys you'll you'll get why you can love and be attracted to a gun um certainly certainly big ones like the one behind <laughs> us which we haven't shot which we still haven't we still shot, haven't shot. We will, i keep saying it we will be making a video um, so uh, another thing that we wanted to talk about, keep the questions coming, we'll come back to your questions, but something that Connors and I did very recently, and I'm currently in the processes of uh, making a video on, your, um, you're going to get a sneak peek now, is we actually attended our first Action Air yep. IPSC Level 3 match. Uh, so yes, is, is, is there a video coming up? Or? No, there's no, no, there's no video. Um, but there will be a full video on the channel uh, released very soon. I'm just trying to get that out at the moment. Um, so we've been talking about Glocks. No, this isn't an, a 9mm uh, Glock. It is a, uh, a BB gun, an airsoft yep. gun. Uh, and we went up to the, the Grange Live Fire, mm -hmm. which actually was a really interesting place. They had loads of different activities from yep. VR to axe throwing. They had zombie rooms, a raid room where you can go and destroy all sorts of old electronics. But they also have an action air match, and it was a level three action air match. So it's yep. a high level match. Yep. It was a real technical test of skill. It was where these yeah. um, guns don't have a lot of range and distance. The courses of fire are much shorter, much more compact, but also mm -hmm. much more technical. There's a lot yes. more thinking the way through a stage rather than sort of running and gunning, as it were. Usually, with a shotgun match, you, it's it's a lot more spaced out. You can usually from one point see everything and, and get a feel for it. With the action air, they, they, where you're doing it indoors, they can close it right down. They don't have to worry mm -hmm. so much about the, the backstop because you know a brick wall is gonna stop it, no problem, or a bit of MDF is gonna stop it, no problem. Yep. And they- Or even pack, netting. They're or, net, or netting, netting yeah. Netting and they pack it right in. And there was one stage, I think it was the third stage of the day that we did, mm -hmm. um, long or a medium stage, and it was just a real, mind bender basically. oh the one with like the 16 apertures yes yeah yeah, yeah. yeah and disappearing to... target well not disappearing that was ridiculous it was a great targets. it was a great stage once you figured it out but, uh, yeah. but we've got two examples of different um categories of guns really mm -hmm. so um callum's gun here is a glock this is actually a production gun um however it would be a production gun if we hadn't upgraded the barrel and the pop <laughs> in it um but he shot it in standard because it is standard and did pretty well with it for your first match i think I, I was very happy a lot of people i think i was the only person on the day using a glock and the um 
the high cappers were the, the gun of choice for the day. Yeah. Um, but with the upgrades, it was accurate. Um, in terms of reliability, I had some issues with the mag venting. So we, we, we think that was an issue that can be solved. It's a very simple issue. So I think when 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 we first got this gun. Um, there was a lack of understanding on how to fill these magazines <laughs> yes. up properly. Yeah, yeah. So they have a bubble in them which we need to purge. Um, we haven't done that yet for these magazines, but um, I think you should be much better off once we fix that problem. But it was a, a really interesting match, and, and I have to be honest, but, you know, I've looked at Action Air and Airsoft before, and, and I've always said, if you're pulling a trigger, you're, you're shooting a gun, mm -hmm. you're part of a shooting community, and we should always stick together. You know, if all the airsofters stuck up for the live fires and the air rifle guys stuck up for the airsofters, yep. we'd be a much happier community. But having said that, I have always looked a little down on airsoft and, and action air because it's, you, you think about it, well, I had a BB gun when I was a kid, and you think, oh, it's, it's just a toy. And you go to one of these matches and you see the, the top level shooters running the, the stages. Blisteringly fast. Absolutely incredible. There's, there's um, no recoil to contend with, so their, their, their shots and their follow-up shots are always super, super fast. Just, just yeah, absolutely and incredible. As we've seen from some of them who've then gone out to NHTSA to shoot, mm -hmm. um, the skills are transferable. They can go out there yep. and shoot a full ball handgun very, very competently. And if you want to go and see this firsthand, there's um, Outdoor Technica, which is mm -hmm. run by Arius, and he's a predominantly an, an airsoft, an action air shooter. Mm -hmm. And he went out on the last trip to uh, Utah, and he, I, th I believe he took a, it took a little while for him to get used to the recoil. Yep. Obviously, that's not something that an action well, air guy has, yeah. to, um, has to deal with. But he was very quick off the bat because of the training. Um, with, with his action air and it's actually one of the main draws for us mm -hmm. going in was actually getting some more training on on handgun IPSC handgun but we actually had yeah. such a good day so we're going to just start doing it personally for its own merit. I'm, I'm not actually a massive fan of pistol I am primarily a shotgun shooter mm -hmm. and um, I've shot pistol plenty of times out in Prague um, it was good fun I enjoyed it but it wasn't it didn't spark the same sort of desire to get better that shotgun does but going to an actual level three mm -hmm. ipsc match and shooting um i enjoyed and, that immensely and, and I, I will go well I've, I've recorded it already so i know what i go into but we uh, i'll go into it now action air is actually one of the best gateways into full ball shooting in the uk so mm -hmm. within ipsc and certainly within the uk psa which is the ipsc franchise for the region of um, england scotland and wales they have a points based system so the main reason that I wanted to go and shoot this action air match level three is because you get three points and you need three points to be well you either need to shoot a level three or two level twos to be able to go and shoot an international IPSC match mm -hmm. now NHTSA is in a different region it is considered an international match so for me to qualify for it I needed to go and get the the points from the level three, mm -hmm. I got that. I didn't get DQ, neither do you, which was no. very good. That's the main goal of the day, really. You did come very close at one point. Oh, okay, very, very close. I think that was a little bit of anger and forgetting that you're moving yeah. with a short gun rather than a long gun. And discipline. I mean, again, discipline, this, this yeah. is another uh, feature of that. Practice comes into it. Yes, um, but Action Air will help with this with a with a full ball gun as well. You know, if you if you ignore the gun for a second, you're still running very similar courses. It's you've got an RO on your show, shoulder. It's pretty much the same rules and procedures. So you, you get used to that. You get more disciplined. And you know, to be completely honest, I got really lazy and, and a bit of the the red mist. I I made a really silly mistake on my last shot, and I just ah, oh, you know, I just without thinking, just did that. And you know, probably a foot away from my feet. And you know, the RO, you know as he should, had a quick word with me, like, be careful doing that in the future. So so I was watching you from the side. You didn't mm. actually sweep your feet, but you got no. very, very close. And that's if it. If you'd swept your feet, it, it would have been a DQ. Home. So, yeah, I wanted to get the, uh, the, the sign-off for that match. So we will be going out to NIT, so I believe it's in May, mm -hmm. which is a level three full ball handgun match. So if you're interested in shooting yeah. full ball handgun, join the UK PSA, go and shoot um, some action air matches, Get, build up your points, build up your experience, get your competition license, get your um, safety certificate, mm -hmm. uh, and then you'll be able to go out to NHTSA and comp compete in full ball. Yeah, so Callum's main reason to go for going to go to this level three was to get his points. Yeah. Me, I actually just wanted to try Action Air. I built this race gun quite a while ago, and I've always wanted to shoot it 
in an IPSC match, it's the reason I put it, I put it together, and I finally got to give it a good run through. It is a uh, split slide 2011, so a high capper. Um, a lot of people remarked the sizes of my groups at the match because they were BBs were regularly touching each other on the targets, and I attribute it entirely down to the gun. But this is talking about a great gateway into shooting. This gun it, you can buy off the shelf, 150 pounds, and it's almost completely ready to go. I did have a, a breakage with it before I even started the match, which I had <laughs> yes. to repair yeah. um, the night before. So it does; they do have their flaws, but that is. Previously, it would have cost you over a thousand pounds to build a gun like this mm -hmm. for Action Air. Now you can buy this off the shelf with a few modifications and strengthening improvements. Um, you can actually make it run really well. And knowing what I know about tuning 1911s, I'm going to start working on this gun and going to tune it right up, reduce the trigger pull, things like that. We were talking uh, a minute ago from um, you know, a question from one of you guys about the cost of getting into shooting. Well, you can. For go going get and getting a license and a safe and all that rigmarole, go and get an action air gun, get into some action air shooting, and then go and use the the borrowed guns from the UKPSA out in Nitsa. Mm -hmm. So you don't even have to go and buy a, a live fire gun, but you could even go and represent Team GB. And again, that's a another reason you know a, a dream to go and represent mm -hmm. GB um, for the UKPSA. Again, you need to get a certain amount of points, and with not being myself, not being able to shoot long barrel pistols in the UK, the only way for me to build up the points to have even come close to qualifying for the team is through Action Air yeah. and going out to Nitsa. So, or like me, I've now got a bit of a bug for Action Air, and I'm just going to be going and shooting more yeah. Action Air matches next year. I and, really enjoy. And I'm going to be joining you. I, you I, I have got no aspirations to shoot the handgun world shoot. There, are, <laughs> there are many people much better than I am at shooting pistols. Well, so. you're, you're sat next to one. Definitely not here. <laughs> we, we, we were barely half a percent apart of the action air match, so <laughs> it was it was close. But I but I did come in front. It was it was close. <laughs> yeah. So um, let's. I mean, the most expensive part of this entire rig is the holster. Yeah, and, and that I, is funny. I did yeah. go a bit tarty with the holster. But then you could use that um, that whole setup for a full bore. Well, you did. You took it out to Nitsa. Yeah, this, this is yeah. this is this is the same, and that was the idea of building this. Is when I had aspirations to shoot lots of full bore handgun, I built one rig to shoot. Yeah. shoot it all um so we had a question um from hotshot 83 do you have a yukara so for anyone that doesn't know um the yukara certificate or license whatever the right terminology is because i always get it wrong um it's basically for airsoft skirmishes so um in the the uk uh, an airsoft gun like this is considered a replica firearm and if you don't have a yukara you can't buy one like this. It has to be painted at least 50% of a vibrant colour to basically show that it's it's not a, a live firearm. Uh, if you have a Yukara, and I believe you have to go and attend three skirmishes to obtain one, then you can have one look like this. Now, because it's Bluefield Sports and it's an RFD that can be bought, any guns can be bought uh, without being... Um, painted and I was using it for an IPSE registered match so it was on lend I hadn't purchased it and it obviously came back to the gun room so there's no issues legality on that um, and I've said it before it's actually the Yukara that got me into shooting I went to go and buy a BB gun I couldn't because I didn't have a Yukara I ended up going and buying an air pistol mm -hmm. far more realistic far more powerful couldn't shoot that at tin cans in your room. So I went and joined a shooting club, my, my university club, and got into to live fire shooting as well. So thank you very much, Yukara. <laughs> um, but the, the really, like, I think, silly thing about Yukara is the way our laws work. Let's say Connors has a Yukara. Mm -hmm. You can go into an airsoft shop, buy it unpainted, and then privately, you can sell it to anybody else. Yep. So Absolutely. it completely bypasses. No. No, no. You can't. So when I went into Wolf Armoury, there was a guy stood at the counter and he said, if you want me to buy it for you and then we go out and I'll sell it as a private transaction, that's fine. And the guy behind the counter said, yeah, that's completely, he was completely happy with doing that. That's because it's not because it's, it's not because it doesn't contravene the DCRA Act of 2006, it's mm. because it's untraceable. So they can't do you for it. Technically, it's still illegal to sell one. Yeah. Okay. So, so okay. the the issue with um, valid defence, and I'm not yeah. condoning anything you talk about <laughs> there. The issue is with valid defence is it specifically says in law airsoft skirmishing yeah. reenactment or film, which expressly prohibits 
uh, the purchase of an unpainted gun for Action Air. Yeah. So a lot of the people have had to go and get you, Cara, or get the gun by some other not so clean means yeah. um, to get one unpainted. But quite frankly, in an IPSC situation, does it matter if your gun is painted? No, absolutely that, not. That gun that I showed you, my gun, um, you can actually buy it. It comes with a bright blue slide. Um, as a stock option, the shop doesn't have to paint that for you because, hey, it doesn't matter. And no. we're shooting IPSC. We like fun coloured guns. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, so let's get on to a few more of your questions. Um, well, we're, we're still talking about gun uh, pistols and someone's asked, okay. is it a good idea to buy an AliExpress mag holster? Um, I'm going to go ahead and say yes. So these are the same Emerson gear style mag holster. Mm -hmm. They serve me pretty well. I'm going to be going for some double alpha, or I'm going to try and get in some double alpha so I can compare them for myself. Um, but these have been great. They came with different setups, different chips, so you can set them up for single stack or double stack mags. Mm -hmm. Obviously, for a high capper, it's a double stack. Um, the one thing I will say, really important, is they have this adjustment screw. Swap them from the outside to the inside because there are a massive snag risk <laughs> on the outside. These things are really fiddly. They have a bunch of little bolts. They are not made very well, but they do do the job. Um, and they've been standing up, no problem for you. Yeah, been, been working just fine. And yeah. that was, I think I paid £25 for the set of four. Yeah. Whereas a double alpha mag, they're, they're £50 a pouch. <laughs> yeah. uh, but I still, I'm, I want to see for myself what the differences are between them. So I will be getting some double alpha pouches and seeing what they're like. And uh, Lanky Alex, which um, is of course Alex Florence, uh, who we talked about earlier, and Callum claimed before the match he was going to beat everyone with his Glock. I, <laughs> I didn't. I didn't. I said I'd beat some people with it, which I did. So as Callum happy. claimed before the match that he would beat everyone with a high cap with his Glock. I didn't. I, I did not. It's a lie. You have no proof. It's not written. I'm pretty sure you sent it <laughs> in the Facebook Messenger to Alex. Well, maybe I did. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. Um, Best caliber for long range pest control, in your opinion, 500 yards. Someone earlier today was Three talking. Three foot. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that means you don't have to pick anything up at afterwards. Yeah. Well, there was a customer talking earlier today about 22250. I don't know what that's like. 22250, 500 is probably pushing it slightly, but right. 3 to 500, 22250 is an awesome round. Very, very flat, very yeah. fast, and very cheap. I suppose to really answer that question, it depends what you're shooting at. Mm -hmm. is, um, it, is it a fox or is it a rabbit? Yeah, you know, are you going for squirrels at 500 yards? I mean, all, best, <laughs> all the best to you if you are. Are you going for deer at 500 yards? Again, that's probably a little pushing it a bit too far. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Pest control certainly isn't isn't my remit. No. I, I I would just default and say 308 because that's really all I know. Yeah, default to 243. Two, 243. Most, most universal. Yeah. Uh, Calvo is uh, <laughs> asking um, if you've only shot full bore IPC handgun, what divisions are there in Action Air? It's exactly the same. Yeah. It's exactly the same rule set as a uh, full bore handgun with a few uh, changes to hard ta hard targets. You can get cl a lot closer to a hard target mm -hmm. in Action Air. Well, that was one of the things on the first stage. We um, there were these poppers, and it's like I'm I'm literally like from there to there. And usually with well, um, I, I queried it with the RO. Yes. Um, being a range officer myself, like. All my experience is you don't get closer than five metres to a hard target. But actually, in action air, the rule is different. Because well, because the recoil isn't going to hurt as much. Well, not the recoil, not, not the ricochet. Recoil, the ricochet. Even. The, ricochet. Yeah. Um, the problem with action air is because there are so few competitors, divisions like um, production optic yeah. and all that just don't exist because mm -hmm. you need three or more competitors per division. For instance, you originally went to that match intending to enter into production, but because there's only one yeah. other person shooting production, it wasn't really worth it. There's not three people to make a division, so you both had to shoot standard. Mm -hmm. As the sport grows in popularity and more people start shooting it, I think we will see more of these divisions being represented. Yep. For instance, there is no revolver division because there is only one revolver available for action air that's usable yep. at the Dan Wesson, and it's not great, yeah. unfortunately. <laughs> Um, so moving away from Action Air for a sec, we've uh, got a question from Craig I Mack. Like Action Air. Um, are bump, bump stocks legal, like on the Smith & Wesson 1522 or something? Um, so I guess you mean within the UK. They're not anymore. So it was actually the Offensive Weapons Bill that has banned the Mars and the Lever release where they, they banned it completely. So before that, and that was only uh, May this year mm -hmm. that they did that. Um, before that, it was very grey you could legally buy one in the UK and, and technically legally use one in the UK, 
whether or not you'd be brave enough to go up against a judge and argue your point that it was still a legal firearm to our laws, mm -hmm. it, again, you were probably going to end up getting a very hard slap at the risk at, at best. Um, but yes, they are now categorically uh, banned in the UK. You cannot buy them like, like in the States. Yeah. If you were going to look at it pessimistically, as soon as you put it on a gun and made it to it would be Section 5, so you're breaking a whole world of laws. Yeah, yeah. that's it. It's, um, I mean, again, in, in the definition of what a full auto, a semi-auto is, it's, it's t if you put it on a 2 2 semi, it's, it doesn't necessarily make it Section 5, but it's yeah. really, really grey, and you'd have to be incredibly brave to, or stupid. He, to, uh, he says he saw, he saw one on Gun Trader on a 15.22, the gun was £1,700. That is, <laughs> that's going to get someone in trouble. Yeah, oh, I don't. Is that? <laughs> oh, he, he says it was a few years ago. Well, a few years ago, bump stock was technically legal. Well, yeah, that's that's what I mean. Yeah. You know, um, a few years ago, there was nothing in law banning them. But again, a judge not 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 banning the stocks. No, fitting a stock to a gun. On the other yeah. hand, well, but again, it's it's about uh, spirit of the law and intent, and mm -hmm. you'd have a very hard time arguing that you know, you weren't skirting the law, you weren't doing anything silly. So, again, I'd highly, well, it is illegal now, but even back then I'd highly have uh, recommended against doing that. Uh, I've got a question, if you hold a FAC, can you do a level one practical at NHTSA? You don't need an FAC. So, as I said earlier, you know, I'm working up to going and do the main match, which is a level three out in NHTSA. Mm -hmm. I don't have an FAC. UK PSA member. It's UK PSA member. I'm a member of a Home Office approved club. So therefore I can borrow any lawful guns under the club exemptions to be able to shoot in a match. So anyone can do it. And that's why I've been pushing NHTSA so hard to all of you guys, because all you have to do is join the UK PSA for what, £40 a year? I think it's gone up now, because that, that was the anniversary Okay. Okay. Pounds. It's it's might gone up, but still, it, even if it's eighty quid, even if it's doubled, it's, 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 it's not eighty quid. I think it's no. like seventy five. Like seventy five. So, you, seven, you pay seventy five quid. Anybody, FAC or not, can go out and and shoot with the UK PSA out at NHTSA. So and join the UK PSA for interest in practical shooting. They are your your national representative, yeah. and you'll get all the information on all the upcoming matches. All. The thing is, it's down to match directors to publicise their matches, but level mm -hmm. three and above have to be publicised, and yep. they will all be announced. You know, you, yeah, join the UK PSA, support, support the, support the sport. I mean, practical shooting. You know, obviously, we're, again, we're a little biased on that subject, but it best, is best sport in the world. Absolutely, yep. but it's also, you know, I'm, I'm pretty confident in saying the fastest growing discipline within shooting sports, not just in the UK, but internationally. Who are you calling, Callum? Calling Callum? Who's called you? Someone Callum? goes, thanks Callum and Callum. I ain't Callum. <laughs> <laughs> you wish you were. Um, I'm glad why, I'm not. Why does the big beard still have look... an FAC? What? <laughs> Low blow. <laughs> why, why does the big beardy look grumpy? That's because he is. I'm always grumpy. <laughs> it's, 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 you know, I've had I've had many comments this week on my grumpy demeanour. It's just the way I am. He has resting it... bitch face. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> Did you guys know that Mr. English shooting is ticklish? And I'm very, I can be very violent. I can, when tickled. Um, <laughs> that, 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 that must have taken a lot of restraint there. No, I just put it on. I just try to make you feel happy when oh, you tickle okay. me. It's part of our play. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I think we're going to have to get onto the, the elephant in the room. What's that? Well, it's the election, isn't it? Oh, okay. No, not Connor's favourite topic because no. he, he loves to remain neutral yep. and not get involved in politics but you know I love to get involved in politics I might just go and leave you to this one for a bit <laughs> you can just no no you need to mediate me in case, in case I go over the no, no 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 so obviously guys it's the the UK election and for gun owners as I think I saw someone earlier say, politics always comes into guns and gun ownership and, and sports shooting. We can't avoid it. It's a massive part of our existence as firearm enthusiasts. Uh, so I've, well, I think everyone here has, has gone out and voted already. Uh, and I made a post today, uh, basically making it quite clear who I had voted for, which was the Conservative Party. Now, a lot of people, and, and not only making it clear about the Conservative Party, but also basically saying that if Jeremy Corbyn gets in, we're all screwed as gun owners. And people are always very, very quick to 
to jump on, well, actually it's the Conservatives that have brought in more gun restrictions than, than the Labour Party, which is completely correct. However, the Conservative Party have been in power for longer, and also they were in power during the, the largest mass shootings within the UK. Um, and I have to believe that if Labour is in power during those shootings, our laws would be a hell of a lot more stricter if, if at all being able to own guns at all. My feeling from what I've seen, from what I've read, um, it would be an absolute disaster for, for UK shooting sports if the Labour Party were to get in. Uh, and I know a load of people again are going to come back and say, oh, there's nothing, you know, Jeremy Corbyn hasn't gone and said anything specific. It, it's not necessarily about specific things that have been said. It's, it's everything else. It's, it's the cumulative effect. It's the cu cumulative effect. Boris Johnson, some people believe, is anti-gun. Well, there are picture, pictures of him with guns. There's pictures of him with pheasants. And, you know, he gets accused of being a posh Eton boy. Well, you can't accuse someone of being a posh Eton boy and then call them anti-gun. Because if you're a posh Eton boy, well, you're going to like shooting. It's just part of that that sort of that world, effectively. So I, I think for, for shooting, and again, it is just my opinion. You're, you're welcome yeah. to form your own. And I got accused of forcing someone how to vote. I'm just giving my opinion, giving what I think is, is best for the sport. And I, I have to say that is the Conservative out of the the main parties. Yes, the absolute best party would be the Libertarian Party, uh, even the Brexit Party because of Nigel Farage. He's the only, um, I believe, the only leader of a, a, but a he, party to so, come so out So he, he did say he would, he would bring back handguns, but at the same time he hasn't said anything about it for like four years. No, because it's, you know, if, he, if he's trying to gain momentum, it is a divisive topic. He is going to try and shy away from it, and I completely understand that. But yes, you know, really for, for gun owners, I think the, the best choice is Conservative. If there's a Lib Dem, Labour coalition or a majority Labour, I, I think, well, not just gun owners, I, I personally think we're all screwed anyway. But for gun owners, I think it's just going to get a hell of a lot worse very, very quickly. I think it would be nice to see the Libertarian Party gain a couple of seats. Yes. So we were talking about this earlier because the thing is, when it comes to debates on gun laws a lot of MPs just don't bother turning up. No. You know, you might have like six people hearing a debate on, on, a, on a gun law. However, if a couple of, even one or two Libertarian MPs get in, then you know that those two people will be at every gun law debate. Mm -hmm. And suddenly it goes from, you know, from six MPs who are all indifferent to two MPs of those six who are four gun sensible gun control and things like that. Well, the, the pro-gun voice becomes yeah, a lot a lot louder. Because they will be there. Yeah. And people will have to actively go out there to be against them. And you yeah. might get more of a turnout. You might get more mm -hmm. of a discussion. Or you might just have a more sensible... Um, sensible, well, ses sensible discussion, which yeah. is actually what we ask for all the time. It's, you know, whilst we would love for laws to be a certain way, there, there is a balance. Mm -hmm. At the moment, I feel that the balance is far too the other way, and there isn't enough uh, people, you know, representing shooting sports and and shooting and gun ownership in general within within politics. And as you say, if you get a couple of in there that, that are, are going to be very loud, they're just going to turn up. That point. Yeah, they're going to turn, turn up. up to the discussion. You, you look at the offensive weapons bill, and and there were a number of MPs that did an astounding job um, of of standing up and and you know, basically going against the offensive weapons weapons bill um one of the ones certainly was ian duncan smith he he stood up and opposed it and basically said how ridiculous it was that guns that had never been used in crime were, were being banned wouldn't mm. it be better to actually be putting our time money and resource into something more productive um but yeah you can't have guns with it without politics i think you know if the conservative gets in i i think we're going to at least see the status quo maintained um, with Labour, I very much think things are going to get worse for us. But I'm sure you're all bored about the election now. Um, yeah, I'm bored. Let's yeah, move on. We, we will move on. What are we talking about next? What are we talking about next? Uh, well, let's have a look at the questions so far. Um, again, keep your question. Anything you, you want to talk about, anything you, you want to know, anything about us, the gun room, Bluefield Sports, or any particular gun that you can see in the background there, just let us know. Um, we've got complex... Uh, how do you live with so strict laws? I'll tell you how. 
We shoot BB guns. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I get asked all the time, why don't you just move to America? Why don't you go out to uh, the Czech Republic? Why don't you move here? Why don't you move there? What? <laughs> it's a very hard question not to, to say, oh, well, maybe I should. You know, over the years, actually, my life has revolved more and more around guns, and certainly I think that's the same for, for Connors with, with Magload. And yes, it, it would be a lot better for us with our main passion, with our main day jobs, to go somewhere else. But you have family, you have friends, you have relationships that it's very hard to just pick that all up and go somewhere else. We do a lot of shooting here. Yes, it, it's limited. Yes, it's strict. You know, Being on site with an RFD does open things up a lot more for us, gives a, a fair bit of freedom. Being fairly well, I say fairly well connected within the industry mm -hmm. we it makes us easier makes it easier for us but I'm still incredibly sympathetic and well why I started the channel back up again and why I still continue to make videos because it is difficult it is hard to sort of navigate our laws and and get through it you just have to spend a lot of time l reading and, and learning about our There's, laws. There, there is a lot of good shooting that you can do even with the yeah. laws we have over here and that yeah it just well, it's like show. Sh shotgun. That's why we are so good as a nation with shotgun. Yeah. Uh, not just over and unders, but I mean practical shotgun. Mm -hmm. Because that's what we do. We can't do the full bore 223 AR 15 semi autos. We can't do the full bore handguns very easily. So we just move in, into practical shooting. Yeah. What we have, we make the best of. Um, and there are still some top level world class shooters in the UK, top level matches being run. So, yes, we much prefer it, you know, some get some of the American laws over here. Um, Overall, it's not as bad as people think. Once, once you've got over that barrier of understanding our laws and the pitfalls and what to do and what not to do, then it's fairly um, smooth sailing. Mm -hmm. But again, that's why I try to put out as much information as I can on the channel because when you're starting up and learning, it, mm -hmm. it can be a bit of a minefield. Yeah. So uh, Peter Hunt is asking what would be the best way of trying practical shooting in South East England. Um, get in touch with Bluefield Sports. We do um, yep. we do training down here. You can uh, pay for some training and come down and we can shoot uh, mini rifle, shotgun, section two, obviously, or action air. It, it will depend, and, again, if, yeah. if you have an FAC. There's still a lot of guns that you can shoot if you've mm -hmm. never shot an F, um, a gun before. You don't have an FAC and you'll have the lovely Connors as an instructor. He is a qualified UKPSA instructor. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's not a UKPSA course necessarily unless yeah. you're doing a safety course with me. But yeah, you can do safety courses. Mm -hmm. you, there's a number of people that have phoned up and just, I want to shoot some guns. Like, <laughs> not quite like that, but yeah. Bluefield Sports is, is more than happy to tailor a package to you to, to give you a taste of whatever you legally can shoot. Um, saying about the uh, the southeast, and another great uh, place to go and try it would be South Downs uh, shooting club yeah they've, play they've, they've got their sort of uh try semi auto challenge thing. yes it's, it's yeah. not quite practical shooting there's a texas star and some falling plates which yeah. is nice but so, so you can get shooting at some yeah. skill there do a round of plays while you're there as well but yeah if you want i would say a little bit biased but probably the best introduction to practical shooting get in contact with blue field sports and pretty much the world's your oyster and what yeah what, um, what are you going to do Haha, <laughs> someone's opening up the can of worms tonight. Uh, any good, any thoughts on a good starter shotgun for practical shotgun competitions? <laughs> well, okay. Benelli Supernova. It first depends whether you want to go standard, pump, or open. Supernova. Or, or, or modified, but modified sort of goes into standard. Supernova. So if you want to be a Neanderthal and quite a simpleton, you go for the pump. Um, it feels great when you beat open shooters with a pump, let me tell you. Uh, yes, I can imagine. And, <laughs> and it, 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 it makes you feel even better when you beat people with a 2 plus 1. That's that's just the the, the highlight yeah, of my You of don't my often week. tend to beat people even with that 2 plus 1. Oh no, you actually you have beaten some open shooters with a 2 plus 1. So yeah, yeah, there is that. There um, is that. So for standard, I can't recommend the, the Stoger M3K highly enough as a beginner gun. As a beginner gun, yeah. It's... Five hundred and seventy-five pound, five hundred and fifty quid. It's yeah. pretty much ready to go out of the box. They have had their issues in the past, but yeah. uh, the M three Ks we've seen over the last over last year and this year yeah. have all been absolutely spot on, mm -hmm. no issues whatsoever. And then and we've if, actually seen more issues from supernovas. Yeah, yes. we, had, we had that one supernova with a weird magnitude. 
And then for, for pump, obviously Connors is going to say supernova. How much is a supernova? Supernova is about 650 quid. Which for a Benelli... That is... So So the best pump gun you can buy yeah, is 650 is quid. Yeah. The best semi-auto you can buy, yeah. <laughs> like a M2 SP or like a B12i, you're talking sort of 1,400, 1,500 quid yeah. before you start smacking tubes and the rest of it on. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it can get very expensive very quickly with standard. So yeah, probably supernova. Again, if budget is a real uh, issue for you, an old 870, like an 870 win. If you master. can find an old 870, sure. I am, I'm really keen to see what I can do with Winchester SXP. As a new yep. gun, brand new, they're like 250, 300 quid. Mm -hmm. um, they are very, very, very fast to shoot. I have my doubts about the long-term durability of the gun mm -hmm. and also how much the port can be opened out by. Yep. But at the same time, having quite a shallow port actually tends to teach you good technique rather than the supernova where you can just sort of like throw them in for a distance. <laughs> and then for open, I would just avoid open. Open division <laughs> are for people that can't quad load. That, yeah. It's as simple as that. But if you are interested in open... So, so the real Neanderthals are the open people. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, I suppose. But in, in terms of open, what would say is the best? Like how much is the arm sound? The Armstrong RS1 is 700-odd quid, 700-odd quid. Which probably puts it at the cheapest open gun you can the buy. The cheapest good open gun you can buy. Yeah. yeah because the, the Armstrong RS1, you can take as is into a competition and win it with, with, a, with a red dot. Right. Um, so I think for once, we can agree mm -hmm. that if you want to shoot standard for a beginner gun, go for the M3K, the yep. Sogram 3K. For a beginner, even though there probably are cheaper options out there, just go for the Supernova. Yep. Uh, and for an open, go for an Armsan. Yeah, go for um, an Armsan. And modified, go, any, any, anything, special anyway. Anything so. AK based, um, anything AK based will be good for mm -hmm. for open. Uh, we've seen the AR based platforms rise and fall very hard. <laughs> um, yeah, the the, yeah. the the UTAS of course doesn't have a very good reputation and very heavily tainted the reputation of, of open guns. There, there is, however, people like Kerry Ellis at Tactical Solutions, who originally brought, helped bring in the UTAS, yep. who is now taking old UTASs, refurbishing them, and making them great again. Yep. Trouble is, the name of the gun is tainted, even though those guns, those particular guns, work perfectly. Well, and, and not only do they work perfectly once tweaked, mm -hmm. the top-level shooters were shooting, or are still shooting them. Well, it was Team UTAS. Yes. Team UK, UTAS was the UK team, yep. and they did very, very well. If, with it. if you go to but any... they were not standard guns. They're, they're not. It's Again, it's like the Joe Michelac JM Pro Mossberg. The gun that he uses is not the same one. No. Um, but... Do not, if you... Don't ever be tempted by a JM Pro. They are... <laughs> thing is the premise of the gun is great the way it functions but it doesn't function that's the problem i was i was going to say sorry to to interrupt i was going to say if if Kant was on the on the stream Kant is on the stream he would be, he would recommending, be recommending the, K, the K, helga which is a kale distant arms kale 12 i will fully admit that the the uh, as things stand at the moment and certainly before magloid has produced all the go faster bits for the the arm sam mm -hmm. the the Distant Arms KL-12 is by far, undisputed, the best open gun for practical shooting you can buy. In, in my I, opinion. I, I, don't, in I, my don't, opinion. I don't agree. The KL-12 had its time. But the trouble <laughs> is, the KL-12 is a good gun, but still suffered with lots of reliability issues. Like, it was the most reliable open gun, yeah. but at the time it was up against the, the, the likes of the UTAS. Now, with the RS-1s coming out, which are essentially Sagers, yeah. It cannot compete in terms of reliability. Yeah, the, the, and the thing is, in open, the, the game is won and lost on reliability. It, it is, but the RS1 is, is not, the controls are not set up for practical no, no. yet. So, so the distant arms, um, all the controls are perfect yes. for practical shooting. And, and sometimes that makes the difference between yeah. the odd jam here and there. And that's what I mean, people are winning with as it stands at this very moment, yeah. the, the, the distant arms KL12 is, um, is the one to go for. But so Gra Graham Guest is one of the most well-known people in the UK open shooting mm -hmm. game. He is the, one of the people who made the UTAS's 14 UTAS work. And he has turned his attention to the Armstrong RSS1. And it's with Graham Guest that Magloid is working to make all these go faster bits and modifications, moving the controls physically from where they are to something more like an M4, which is something mm -hmm. that Graham Guest has done. Yep. And we, we are going to be putting into production once we work out all the kinks with it. Oh, we've got, um, yeah, can I just say the RS1 is, is not proven yet? The RS1's proven, mate. It's winning it's, it's competitions. Not... Is it? 
Plus. Yes. Mm. Okay. The I, RS, I, the I R, the RS1 is proven. I haven't proven. seen it. I haven't seen it. You, you're not at the match. It's CJ from that match. <laughs> um, no, the RS1 on its first outing out into the wild just wiped the floor with everything around it. The RS1 is a proven gun. All of the UTAS guys are switching over to it, apart from Adam Rousel, who has a very good UTAS. Um, it's the RS1 is the next open gun, and that's why Maglo's getting behind it mm-hmm. because we we see the potential and we know that it can be the best of the best. And there's a reason why all the Russians keep winning open. <laughs> I'm just going to say that. Um, and it's not with a Molot Vepper, unfortunately. Paul Mags is asking, are these on an SGC or an FAC? Again, a very funny quirk of our laws. Whilst an SGC is a shotgun certificate, and you would think all shotguns go on a shotgun certificate, it comes down to <coughs> Uh, down to capacity so if it can hold more than two in the tube then it's uh, then considered a firearm and then has to go on an FAC and that's where you get the terminology of a section one shotgun so certainly all the box feds are section one high capacity standard and pumps again section one Um, and we've got a uh, again question from Craig Mack a bit of a weird question but what would the legality of putting be of putting a Ruger 1022 kit in an Airsoft SA80 replica? So Bill's already answered this question. Um, so I, I get what, what um, he's asking. Bill's answer was uh, there are bullpup kits for the 1022. As long as you meet the overall length restriction, you'll be okay. Yeah. What he's asking is dropping it into an SA80 Airsoft replica. That's still fine as long as it meets the overall length uh, requirement, which With is 24 inches. 24 for, inches, yeah. So as long as you conform to that, I mean, you can strip the stock off of any gun, put anything on it in any shape you want, as long as it's 24 inches, as long as it has a 12 inch barrel, mm-hmm. you're golden. Yeah. And, and that can be done by pretty much, anyway, it could be done in your garage at home, um, or you can take it to a, to a gunsmith and, and have it done there. So not a problem at all, just make sure it doesn't go below 24 inches, otherwise you're going to be in possession of a Section 5 firearm. Yes, you'll get into a lot of trouble for that one. <laughs> Again, you'll, you'll get the pork pork nom noms. The pork pork nom noms. <laughs> okay, so now we've got to talk. It's it's not necessarily an appropriate conversation for UK best uh, UK based shooters. No. Um, but there is a, a, a YouTube channel called um, Donut Operator. I don't know if you guys have watched him or seen him. Go and have a watch. It's pretty more it's hard to describe the appeal of it it's it's they're horrible videos to watch but he makes them so nice to watch because his delivery and this is, this is your words his yeah. delivery or and the commentary on the videos it's, it's, it's police body cam footage from from the us yeah i think we should just leave it there no he, he covers shootings that's exactly up to you now in custody <laughs> yeah. he, he he breaks down <laughs> um shoots and not just shootings um, any sort of police encounter, so when they deploy a canine, when they deploy tasers, when they deploy less than lethal, when they do end up shooting people, and he does cover cover a lot of the very well known shootings. And he's an ex police officer, ex squat member, I believe. Squat, 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 squat. <laughs> it's getting late. It's getting late. Um, and you know, he he comes at it from the police side of view, and he breaks it down. But he's incredibly funny. I, again, I don't want to make light of these shootings, no. but he does make you laugh in what he says. It's um, and again, it's very educational in why the police out there do the things they do when they're accused all the time of of being, um, you know, using more power than they should, shooting people when you know people think they shouldn't. And he breaks it down step by step. But it is quite funny. And he does other more cheerful videos as well. Like he gave his ten year old son a a 9mm AR, which I think probably I blew the heads of many liberals out there. Yeah. Um, but great channel. He's got something like 1.3 million subscribers. Go and check out Donut Operator. Uh, he definitely has my vote. Mm-hmm. Um, again, keep up. Oh, yeah, so Stephen Wolf, uh, Wolf uh, he teams up with Demolition Ranch. Yeah, he's done uh, a n- number of videos. I believe the one he's best known for is the less, less than lethal video where he tests a load of less than lethal options on each other <laughs> or himself um but again it just gives you a different aspect and you know again it is part of the gun thing you know obviously not in the uk it's, 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 it's not it's not uk stuff but it's a i find it a very interesting insight into american gun culture mm-hmm. and actually the way police utilize guns and gets me thinking about stuff well should the police in the uk yeah. have guns and 
it's not a question I have an answer to, but it's a question that it raises and something I like thinking about. Well, again, looking, again, we're, we're going into rocky ground now. Um, I think we should probably just leave that there because uh, we don't want to get in the, we don't well, want no, to get the channel shut down again. <laughs> it's, well, I, just, I just won't voice any opinions on the matter, but there was the London Bridge shooting. Well, not shooting it was it was only the police officers doing <laughs> the shooting um but a lot of the, there was a lot of questions raised about that of people going why did they have to shoot him why did they do what they did where did the novel toss come from <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> i mean that, that, how british you have a terrorist going running <laughs> running loose and someone out of nowhere pulls out a narwhal tusk like um and i actually read something um, about that i didn't realize it watching the video to begin with but the guy had been stabbed in the arm. Oh, right. So he had lost strength. Because um, I watched the videos and he's like, it does look like he's just gently prodding him. Right. And you think, in that scenario, you would be giving everything you've got. But it, he had a lo loss of strength. He was just, he was trying everything he could. But again, you know, we will move swiftly on from that. But yes, go and check out Donut Operator. Mm -hmm. Really, really enjoying his channel at the moment. Only recently well, I found him a well, couple weeks ago. It's because we're doing a lot of assembly work at the moment, which involves doing repetitive motions. Mm -hmm. We're sitting there with YouTube while we're, while we're working. And, and, and what started it all is the bark, bark, nom, nom. So <laughs> there is one particular Fur video. Fur missiles. Fur missiles. Go and watch some of, some of his bark, bark, nom, nom. Bork, bork. Came, bork, bork, nom, nom. That's bark, not bork. Bork, bork, nom, nom. Bork, bork, nom, nom where he breaks down the use of canine um, units and it though those are quite wholesome videos because no one really gets badly hurt and it's it's quite <laughs> it's, it's quite there's one video in particular and we absolutely lost our minds over it it was it was hilarious again all down to his his this is it's, it's his delivery it is absolutely um lmt ar15 straight pull Yes, so I I think it was the first um, shooting show, British shooting show that I went when, when it was still at Stonely. I think there is probably a video on the channel if you search for it on the channel. Um, they they are available in the UK. Uh, I believe they are built to a very high standard. They are on the the pricier end of um, of the scale, but. I've, I've only heard good things about them. I've not shot one myself. I can't really give a huge opinion on them. But certainly looking at them at the show and, and talking to the guys that bring them in, um, I think it's a, it's a good option. I, I know nothing about them. So. No. Um, I mean, they, they do have a good reputation. So mm. they're definitely an option if you're looking at straight pool. Again, if, if you are looking at straight pools, there are thankfully now a plethora of options. You've got Southern Gun Company. You can I'm still go waiting to, to get our hands on a syscar. Siskar, yes. If if David Kiddle is, is about from Calibre Innovations, we would still absolutely love to get hold of the the, the Siskar nine and even the two two three variant. And, it, and, it, and if he's watching, I really need that lower. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so yeah, the Siskar Southern Gun Company, I believe Wayne at Northwest West Custom Parts does straight pulls. Um, who else? There's there's loads. There's loads. There's tons of straight pulls. Loads of people doing conversions and all sorts of things. Well, there's the the late Bradley uh, of Bradley Arms. Uh, mm -hmm. I believe Bradley Arms is still going. He had a phenomenally good reputation for straight pull. Pretty much anyone doing CSR had a Bradley Arms gun, mm -hmm. um, and I believe Bradley Arms is still going. So there's the the option of of getting one of those. Um, so Tech Gaming Forty Five. What have you missed? Everything. A, a lot. A lot, yeah. yes. Or um, what would you expect? You could come in like an hour and, <laughs> hour and 20 minutes late to a stream. Like, we didn't come an hour and 20 minutes late to your stream, did we? <laughs> didn't watch it at all. No. Um, I, which I actually, it's on my list of things to watch because I actually really want to play The Outer Worlds and he's done a, done a couple of streams on that now. So, Well, um, we all of these streams are recorded through YouTube and they were put up pretty much instantly after the stream stopped. So if you are coming in halfway through and you want to see what we what we were talking about earlier, see what, see what you've missed, well, you'll be able to catch it up later on tonight or yeah. even tomorrow. So, and again, all of the previous streams are up there. So if you want to go and see us, um, like last, uh, the last stream was uh, pretty fun to do with uh, Dan we're, Smarrow. We're Dan Smarrow. Maybe we'll get some more special guests on. Yeah, yeah again, if, if anybody wants to come and um, sandwich themselves between Connors and I, and-, and There is some space here for- Some. some. I mean, we can zoom the, the camera out a bit further, give a bit more space. Um, but we- um, Stop eating the pies, so that'd help too. That, that's rich, that's very rich. Um, Noah Kate, does Gumlin TV offer internships? As long as they're unpaid internships, <laughs> that's definitely a good, yes. Good answer. Um, but please drop us uh, an email, um, drop an email to me at callum at gumrum.com. 
dot yeah. tv uh if if you're interested in coming down and getting some um some experience doing an internship i'm sure there is something we can uh we can sort out we're always looking for, for more hands and more help yeah um Callum's internship is over, so probably yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah he, I, he, did, he didn't pass, I didn't he make didn't it. pass probation. Have you seen me in a video recently in no. government TV? No, I was, I was kicked out kicked out of, of me and uh, Is gun ownership increasing in the UK? Yes. Yes. Yes, it's a slow rise, but it is increasing. And, and the really annoying thing is when they bring out all the yearly statistics about the increase in gun ownership, and well, the, the latest debacle was about there was an 11-year-old or a 12-year-old with a shotgun license. And again, people have lost their minds over it. And what they don't realise is that that 12-year-old is probably a future Olympian. Mm -hmm. And like Lewis Hamilton, I think when he first started karting, he was eight years old. You don't come, become a world champion starting when you're 25. You've got to start young. And because of the way that our laws work and some grounds work, having your own SGC, uh, shotgun certificate, will make things easier. But yeah, those statistics came out. Gun ownership is increasing year on year in the UK. It is a trend going upwards. Um, and, and I think really a big part of that has to be social media. We have a, a reputation for being quite insular. In, insular, yeah, quite to ourselves and scared of, of pushing out the message of shooting in the UK, which of course I'm definitely against. And with the likes of where well, you've got Field Sports TV, you've got um, Rack and Load, SRS Power, English Shooting, of course, and, and all the other channels that are um, you're pushing out and all the Facebook groups and Facebook pages, um, teams like Firearms UK and Mike Lindsay, getting the message out there. The, the amount of people that I end up having messages about, that, which they go, I didn't know you could own guns, oh my God, and then like six months later I get another message going, yeah, I've got my FAC, I've already bought like six guns, I'm now going for my variation, and it's incredible to see. And it's just about sharing the message. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people are always worried about talking to their work colleagues, talking to friends and families about the sport that they, that they do. You have nothing to hide. You know, and if they've got a problem with it, it's their problem, not yours. Yeah. Talk to people, share the sport so on social media. I think person. hoplophobia should be a medical condition. It should. Well, technically, it is. It's a phobia, isn't it? You should be. Um, it should be mandatory to obtain an FAC if you have hoplophobia. I'm not going to say that word again. What word? You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> um, so, uh, my local club has a waiting list, so I can't even get an FAC for a while. Yeah, we, we're seeing more and more of this. Join the NRA, as much as it pains me to say it. Join the NRA, join the UKPSA, join Kentucky Firearms Club. Oh, yeah. Um, there are a number of clubs that are welcoming people with open arms, that are facilitating shoots up and down the country. There, are, there will be other clubs you can go to. But organisations like the UKPSA, organisa organisations like the NRA and the um, NRSA, they will have NSRA. a NSRA. It's getting late, and I'm dyslexic. Um, they have a catalogue of their clubs. So if you get in contact with them and say, "This is what I'm looking for. Is there anything in my area?" They should get back to you with a list of clubs you can join. So tr try try another club. Um, and and unfortunately, we are seeing more and more. It has always been a problem of old boys clubs. So clubs which have a certain type of committee that don't want new members, they want to keep things how they are because they're happy as current members and they're not helping. Well, they can just go and do one because they're not going, they're not doing the sport any good, they're not progressing the sport and they they will be the death of the sport if if they don't allow their clubs to open up. But I will I will stop my rant there. Please do. Uh, someone's yeah. talking about um I don't know South Yorkshire, is that near North Coates Parts? I'm not sure if it is. Alex? Yeah. Yes. Yeah? yeah. All right, yeah, that's, that's a club to join. That don't is they have a waiting list? Uh, I don't think they no, do. No, 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 it's um, Worcester Norton. Worcester Norton, yeah, that's, yeah. that's down our end. Yeah. No, North Coast Butts, fantastic club because they're clay shooting. Yep. They're one of the big uh, practical shooting clubs. Mm potentially one of the best ones it, it's well they hold a level three every every year oh right? yeah god yeah and uh, some of the best shooters in the country shoot there mm -hmm. um and they've got gallery small ball i don't think i don't know if they do any center fire long range mm -hmm. stuff but maybe they go they travel somewhere else for that. but yeah definitely definitely north coast but so if that's one who, if if you're local to it that's a club to join no, absolutely yeah. and unfortunately it's not one of the ones i've i've had the privilege of going to but connor's did you Oh no, because no. CJ's filmed there both yeah, times. Yeah, so C CJ went and filmed there. 
Um, and Connor's going to shoot there. I, I was probably yeah. doing my nails or something. Um, Daniel Smeral, damn, this stream seems a bit meh. Well, you're, you're, you're free to leave at any time. Happy birthday, Dan. Oh, yes, happy birthday. I did wish him happy birthday earlier. It's the big man himself, Daniel we did, Smeral. We did have him on for two hours last, uh, on the last live stream. Yeah. Never again. <laughs> <laughs> but um, Dan is notorious for his Hawaiian shirts that matches yep. um, and, and always drops in. Uh, fantastic guy, and we are missing you. You should come down. We should do more streams together. Definitely. But you should bring your Hawaiian shirt next time. Um, again, keep the uh, questions coming. Coming. So we've got uh, Bill Moore, mm -hmm. um, part of Team Magload. Yep. Nice mug, Connors. So I don't think... Uh, oh, you can just about see it. So... It, when is it available on the website? You can't have it. It's mine. <laughs> well, this mug won't, won't be available. No. Um, and, and actually, this is a special thing you're doing for your dealers, aren't you? Yeah, well, I had to have one for myself. I mean, Absolutely. It's the, my mugs. <laughs> yeah. So, the, uh, the, so yeah, all, all our Maglo dealers, we're going to be shipping them a little Christmas present. We've oh. kind of ruined the surprise now, but I just couldn't find a mug earlier. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I, I'm sure if people are interested, if you uh, want a Maglo mat, mug. let me know. I mean, I'm, I'm more than happy to make a few more and put them mm. up on the website. Um, but yeah, generally, this is just a present for the dealers at the moment. And we had a recent delivery of new um, snapback caps, uh, and you're currently yep. developing the Magload cap. We well, have, yeah, so I'm trying to bring some more technical gear onto the market. Mm -hmm. I'm very, very picky with that sort of thing. I have found well, a. What do you mean with that sort of thing? You're just genuinely very picky. Hush, you're not. <laughs> um, yeah, so we're working on a cap. We, it's a great cap. It's a technical cap, so it's designed for shooting. So there's no bubble on the top. It's high cut for your glasses. Um, Velcro closure, of course, because you can't rely on on snapback closure for competition use, of course. Um, it's just going to cost a bit of money to put it in production. So when we're ready to put it into production, we will. There, well, um, there's like a million things that you just. You're waiting for you've you've got yeah, we, pretty we, much we, everything we, so down and yeah. Um, I don't know. Is it the sort of thing you'd you'd, you'd pre-order on caps? I don't think it'd be enough to warrant the production anyway. Now. When we're ready to do them, we'll do them. They'll mm -hmm. be the best hats ever made. Uh, <laughs> well, they Absolutely. they will be because they're designed for shooting. And they have mag load on them. And they have mag load. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So we'll, I'm working on that. I'm working on that. Um, Tech gaming forty five. Um, we need more firearm awareness information in this country instead of. Um, hating a sport when no one knows anything about it. Absolutely, World, World Gun Owners saying. Association. You know? Well, yes, yeah, it, it's groups and um, pages like World Gun, o Gun Owners Association, mm -hmm. which is sharing the message and, and getting it out there. But yeah, I completely agree. We we need more awareness of it, and it's it's not necessarily more awareness. It's about the right awareness. It's mm -hmm. about the right information being out there and and sort of smashing through. Uh, misconceptions because the amount of conversations I've had and, and the one that always sticks in my mind was um, I got a, a taxi back from Heathrow once and I started talking to the to the driver and he you know and I said you know what I do and what I'm involved in and he's like look you know, I've got no problem against you but I'm I'm anti-gun I think they should all be banned and I just opened up the conversation I think a lot of people would shy away from it maybe close down at that point but it's like well okay well why why do you think that? And and don't... Because they're scary and <laughs> they're pink. But it was pretty much like that. It was just misunderstanding. Yeah. Just ask them why. Don't well, just go not, straight I'm... into it and, and, and be argumentative. Ask them why. Find out. And then address those issues. So a, a lot of the stigma attached to the shape of a gun mm -hmm. is down to misinformation, media blowing things out of control, and yeah. people... You know, you're fed from a very young age that this is an evil object. Be careful, it might jump up and kill us all. It might do. Yeah. What well, is it is an a lot, so. a lot, <laughs> a lot of. But but saying that, you know, we've had yeah. this three three eight the poor sat behind us the whole time hasn't tried to kill us once. No, and just put it right at his head, yeah. through his head even. There we go. Ah! <laughs> no, really, the issue is with hoplophobia. I'll say yeah. that again. It's just lack of education. And I think once you explain to people, actually, these are, you know, we're licensed. We shoot them at paper targets and steel plates and, and, and that others for pest control and hunting. These, the, you know, educating them and telling people that gun owners in the UK are the most law-abiding people in the country. Mm -hmm. They have to be if they want to keep their guns. Well, that was one of the big points with the, the taxi driver. 
is that I explained to, to him the procedures of getting a license, the safe storage, mm -hmm. the regular checks, GPs getting involved, having medical assessments and things like that. And, oh, I didn't know that. And, and by the end of our trip, just telling him how things are, not, not trying to ram down the positive natures of, of shooting, but just, no, 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 this is actually how it is. This is the way things are. This is fact. This isn't opinion. Mm -hmm. By the end of it, he actually looked up and said, oh, yeah, well, actually, in terms of handguns, from what you've said, I would have no problem with them being stored at a range for people to use them for sport. Yeah. So actually, okay, it was probably like an hour's drive. I think, I think if there was, like, if you managed to educate everyone in the UK... Yeah on sports shooting and then put it out to a vote I would be surprised if guns were still banned after that however the issue is educating people on this because it if is. you don't talk about it no one's going to know about and, it and not forgetting that MPs are at the end of the day they're, they're human they're people um, sometimes they may not seem like that but <laughs> they, they are and they can build up the same negative perceptions and, and misconceptions and if you I mean they, they, they lapped up the whole thing about a 50 BMG being deadly at 7 miles or whatever it was yeah no, no thanks to Mark Ruthius at the um, uh, Mavis because but, they don't know better and yeah. you know what they're being fed is misinformation aimed at trying to get guns banned. And, and we, you know, we do have a massive hurdle to, to overcome. When, when you have organisations like NHTSA, uh, not NHTSA, um, Neighbours, giving out really bad information to MPs, well, flat, how, out, flat out lies. Really. Flat out lies. What are the MPs going to think? Oh, here we go. Here is the National Ballistic Centre and they're telling us this thing. Why are they then going to go and believe uh, a sports shooter? But you, you have to trust in your organisations like BASC and, and all that to, to sort of speak for us and combat this misinformation, mm -hmm. not just to the general members of the public, but also the MPs. So yeah, just keep sharing. Well, gun owners association, guns are tools, people misuse them, individuals are responsible, not the inanimate objects. Sure. And it's very true. Here in the UK, we have some of the most stringent checks and balances there are mm -hmm. in the world to get hold of a firearm certificate in the first place. Yep. You know, you have to be proven and regularly, every five years, have to be checked up on to make sure that you're you're still fit to own a firearm. The GP will have to report if you um, have a condition that might affect your mm -hmm. ability to own a firearm. It's, I mean, I, personally, I'm, I'm of the belief that if you have an FAC, you should then be allowed full ball semi-auto rifles for competition use, full ball handguns, because... Well, what, what difference does it make if you can own a 50 cal... Yeah, a nine mil pistol, and if you can own a, a two two three bolt action, why not a three oh eight? Why not a, a two four three? You yeah. know, and and we can sit here all day and say what we wish the laws would would should be like. So right, I, I'm pretty sure Noel Tusk's going to be put on section <laughs> five soon enough. Well, anything can be an offensive weapon. Anything can be an offensive weapon. But you are an offensive weapon <laughs> because it's about the use. And they tried to ban and you. They, well, they, they bloody did. <laughs> um, and again, a car is a weapon in the wrong hands. You know, people say people go and drink drive. You're not hearing everyone calling out for the banning of cars. You know, rape. Or alcohol. Rape unfortunately happens. You don't hear about the banning of penises. It's you know, why is everyone so obsessed about the object it's because it's with the, ob the object itself has been demonized and that is something that unfortunately we will never get away from mm -hmm. because we making could. something sound i don't think you can because making something sound scary sells papers right mm -hmm. it's up to logical people to educate other logical people yeah though you will never get around hysteria no those sorts of people cannot be convinced and well that's the definition of hyster hysterical really um but the people who will listen talk to them, tell them about you know, the checks and balances and all the good things that come along with a shooting sport and you know, slowly, slowly through education we might be able to change some people's views on, on what we do. And I think, um, and another thing that we, I wanted to talk about uh, tonight, um, which was, uh, well, actually follows on quite nicely from this discussion, mm -hmm. which was Braces of Bristol. So um, I made a video, it was the most recent video on the channel, um, and for those of you that haven't seen that video, please go and watch it. Um, but if you haven't seen it, basically Braces of Bristol, where I went and bought my uh, Bretta 1301, um, they had their HSBC account closed um, for, well, from what they can determine is the only reason is because they sell guns. They wouldn't give them any explanation. They wouldn't even open up talks with them. It was, no, you're high risk, you sell guns, we're going to close your account. Um, and it, it just...
Okay. There you go. That, that looks like it's back up now. Is it back? Yeah. Sorry, yeah. sorry guys for that. Oh, it's God. it's probably for the best. Callum was just ranting. I always um, rant. Let's, well, let's, let's so but Craig so, Mack was asking, um, is if you're not a member of a club, um, is joining the UK PSA good enough uh, to obtain an FAC? Now, no, I don't de- believe it is. It depends on your force. Here in Hampshire, certainly they'll put every barrier they can in your way to getting an FAC. Yes. However, many others will recognise that the UK PSA, being a practical shooting association with competitions conducted up and down the country, requires you to have no home club in order to compete. So some forces will allow you to have an FAC based on your membership of the UK PSA. Mm-hmm. They may go as far as also to say that you need to take your safety course, which I think is very reasonable if you don't have a home club. Um, I would still recommend trying to find a home club or joining a, a big club that allows you to travel from afar, like Worcester North and Dartford, North Coast Buffs. Um, the best thing is to check with your local FEOs. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Um, yeah, and, then, and back on to what I was saying with, with the races of Bristol, um, I don't know how much of that was, was lost with, with the sound, but Gunshop had their bank account closed by HSBC um, because they're dealing guns and they're deemed high risk and you know I've experienced that through businesses that I've been involved with and, and shops that I've tried to run online um, and you know the point that I make in the video is actually it's so ironic that it's HSBC which of, which of course was um, involved in laundering money for the Mexican drug cartel so obviously Mexican drug lords aren't high risk for HSBC but lawful you know law abiding well restricted well vetted gun shops are apparently too high risk so yeah it's, it's something that we we experience on a, on a day-to-day basis it's something that i think is is only going to be combated by education and, and dispelling misinformation but yeah i wish braces of bristol all the best hopefully they can find a, a bank that's more gun friendly and a little bit more logical mm. and maybe doesn't deal with mexican drug logs but <laughs> that, that's uh, there we go all, all of them apart from barclays have been accused of that at some point or another yeah, well, again, it's about, you know, someone made the, the point of... It's just the double standards of it. It's the money. You know, when you have a Mexican drug do- lord dealing with hundreds of millions or billions, there's a lot of money to be made. When you're dealing with a gun shop compared to a Mexican drug lord, there's there's nothing to be made. So they're, they're quite... I, I think, in, in a way, they like to try and be all... Um, you know, they, they, they like to get up on their high horse and be able to say, oh, yes, we don't deal in firearms sales. very much virtue seeking. Yes. But also, I'm of the opinion that we don't know the full story. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm taking their, their word on it. Um, yeah. But yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty disgusting. Um, Avon, do you ever think that legislation will loosen? Um, I mean, you know, if you want to talk about the... The, the constructs of infinity given anything in an in, you know, infinite amount um, be that time every eventuality is going to happen and if you give it long enough something will will happen you will be able to um, see things that you would think is impossible happen impossible happen um, I, I don't know I mean I, I don't think so uh, we would in, have, the, in the we, short term definitely not no definitely not you'd have to have some sort of radical change in mindset from the government and the government will do what the people are, what the people want, mm-hmm. for the most part. And what the people want is to be scared of guns. <laughs> Unfortunately, yeah. that is that is the case. Or do they want for that, or are they conditioned for that? They're conditioned for that, but are you going to how how do you change it? You know, it's not going to yeah. be done overnight. It will be done with lobbying groups, getting you know people into MP seats who are pro gun mm-hmm. and sensible about it. Not we're not talking about people saying everyone should have guns, but people who have but again and we were talking about this earlier about it being balanced. Again, you know, having someone going out there and just saying everyone should have guns, we shouldn't have licenses, we should just, you know, just give them out like candy, I don't think that's very sensible. Even as, as pro gun as well, I am. why bother lines licensing it if you shouldn't give it to everyone. We exactly. So there there needs to be a balance. And and I always say, I don't think any one person, be that Connors, myself or, or anybody else, has all the answers. We will have our depin- our opinions. We'll be very opinions. Opinions. We, we will have our. Uh, you know, we'll be very passionate about it. We'll be very headstrong about our opinions and, and hard to change. But that's why you need a balance. That's why you do need another side of the argument, and you need to come to a compromise. And I think the biggest issue, certainly in the UK, is is too one sided. There is too much of the argu- other argument, uh, other side of the argument, and there's not enough representation of sensible gun owning. 
uh, individuals within our political system. Actually, that would be a really nice point to talk about. So part of the um, lack of education is that it's not the sort of thing that's on TV. However, yep. that might be all about to change. Yes, and uh, yeah, another bit of news. I'm just going to, for just to make sure I get it correct, I'm just going to go on, um, on the website... So, there has been news recently of um, Silverstone Shooting Centre. Um, I'm typing frantically to bring it up to get all the correct information. So, um, Silverstone Shooting Centre is an amazing facility up by the Silverstone Racecourse, mm -hmm. uh, run by a gun, guy called uh, John Thorne. And it's been recently announced, and I'm trying to, here we go, um, that there is going to be the Hawk Silverstone Shooting Centre British Practical Mini Rifle Championship. So we've been talking a lot about practical shooting and IPSC. So this is going to be under IPSC so rules. It's so strictly speaking, it's not a championship in terms of IPSC because it can't be because it's not made up of level threes. Mm -hmm. However, it's a series of... He doesn't say... They don't say level one competitions, but they say six rounds of competition... Yeah. Shot to IPSC mini rifle rules, so it's IPSC mini rifle. We would imagine it's probably going to be around level one or level two. I, I reckon it's going to be level one, having yeah. having shot there. Um, unless more IPSC representatives get involved in the running of the match, yeah. uh, it will probably be a, a bit loose. But the facility is fantastic, and there's scope for some very interesting and good stages. Like you know, we're shooting. 100 metres with a 2 2 at the last Silverstone level 3 match. Which I don't think there's anywhere else that, that really happens. No. Um, um, so, from, from their website, if you're interested in a bit more information, there's going to be six rounds. Uh, mm -hmm. The best of, of uh, best yeah. four of those rounds, when you compete, are going to score six courses of fire mm -hmm. per round with a, a target distances from 1 metre yeah. to 100 metres. Can they do 1 metre with 2 2s? Yep, with paper. With paper, yeah, of course. Um, and But also, it's not, before we go into too much into the detail, the reason why we're talking about yes. it yeah. is because it's going to be televised on Sky TV and Freesat. We, we, it's a huge elevation for it's, the sport. It's, yeah, it's a huge progression. And actually, uh, it's, it's going to be great. And, and that's what we need. You need it doesn't it. matter if it's not a level three. No. The fact that it's going to be televised, mm -hmm. even if they are, even if there were outlaw matches, Yeah. although there's, there's, there's other connotations to that, <laughs> um, as long as it's run safely and well, which I know the organisers at Silverstone know how to do, then it should be good to watch. It should be good fun. Um, it's but it's going to reach a new audience. It's going to reach yeah. normal TV. It's going to reach you know your, your average Joes, and it, hopefully it will pique interest. It will get people going. Oh well, I, I want to try that. It will mm -hmm. increase you know more membership of the UK PSA and get more people practical shooting, which, yeah. which is going to be absolutely fantastic. There's also. Um, Ten thousand pounds worth of prizes available for for all divisions. Um, you've got mini rifle open, senior, super senior, junior, and best new shooter. So if there was ever a reason to go and try practical shooting, hit up the the Silverson Shooting Centre. There's going to be around um, in in yeah. April, May, June, July, August, and September. Something else to note is because these are not level three matches; they're only running a few stages per round. Yeah. You can have a morning or an afternoon slot, which is great. Mm -hmm. because it means you don't have to commit an entire day to shooting. You can just go and shoot your morning or afternoon slot and, you know... And, and correct me if I'm wrong, but being a level 1 and level 2, you don't need a safety certificate. Being a level 1, yeah. which it's not... Oh, yeah, OK, because it's just... Because it's, it's not... It's not sanctioned. It's, yeah, it's yeah. not a sanctioned match. It's mm -hmm. not even technically a level 1. It's just... Yeah. A match yep. being run to IPSC rules. It's not an IPSC match. And being mini rifle and using the uh, mini rifle exemption, it, there is no requirement yeah. for a safety. So someone, rules. someone was saying about yeah, trying practical shooting for the first time. Hey, that would be a good place to go. You could. Yeah. You might have to wait a bit to to to, to the mm -hmm. championship starts, but. Well, I think, as I said, the first one's in April, um, and Silverstone have club guns there. So, you know, you don't even, you don't need an FAC, you don't need, um, you know, your own gun. You should just be able to turn up um, and, and take part in a match that has 10 grounds worth of prizes. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, besides... The thing the is, even if it's filmed on a potato, I mean, I don't, I don't, <laughs> I don't know what's going to happen, but the fact that so, uh, it's being put out there in front of people and educating them, a few people might go, hmm, you know what, that looks like fun, I might give Silverstone a call, and, mm -hmm. you know... I reckon he'll, he'll have a huge influx of new members. Maybe that's Absolutely. the reason to do it. Well, well yeah. And, Nothing and wrong with that. So, so you know, for me, there's, there's two elevations of our yeah. sport there. There's the, the whole being on TV, but also the money. Like, really, mm -hmm. you don't get a fan base. You don't grow a sport until you have celebrities. You know, look at Jerry Michelin. 
mm-hmm. you know, the only reason people like Jerry Michelak exist is because there is money out in the States in competitive shooting. And that's something that we desperately need to see here in the UK. Not just um, in practical, but mm-hmm. more so, I mean, th- there's enough money out there, I believe, for like clay shooting for someone to make a career out of it. Um, I mean, they give away cars and all sorts for, mm-hmm. for clay shooting, but certainly for practical as well. Just more money, make make celebrities, make professional shooters, and it's just going to elevate yeah. our sport. So there's there's a question here. First of all, hi Alex. Um, Alex Cox is here. Um, yep. Can you use two two WMR? So in IPSC, you cannot use two two WMR. However, these are not IPSC matches. There is probably a very good chance you can use two two WMR in it. However. After developing the muzzle brakes, I found out some very interesting things about the differences between 22LR and 22WMR. And I plan to do some side-by-side testing because I have a feeling that CCI Minimag is going to be very similar in performance to a standard uh, 22WMR round. Mm-hmm. I need to test it and find out, but after seeing chamber pressures and that sort of data, yeah. um, I think that, you know there may not be as many advantages. Well, well, say, well, well for, for a stand around, the thing is with the 22 WMR, you have space for one powder, so you will have 22 WMRs which are, which are packed out. Maybe that's a video, I mean, we can shoot up to 300 yards here. Yes, yeah, so maybe, maybe that's a video we could do at some point after the, the yeah, game yeah. season. I'm, I'm not doubting the master that is Connors, but I know I can hit a rabbit at 200 yards with a WMR and I can't do it with 22. <laughs> yeah. No, the, so. yeah, okay, but. I, I want to do some side by side testing. Yeah. I want to see what the actual difference is because, yes, it makes sense in your head. There's a bigger cartridge; it must have more powder in it. Mm-hmm. But there's more to cartridge and ammunition design than just how much powder you can stuff into a, a round. Yeah. At the end of the day, two two WMR was designed to work in a barrel originally chambered for two two LR, which was then reamed out for a longer case. So it has to match the same chamber pressures. So we'll, we'll see. Well, yeah, it could make a very interesting video, actually. Yeah, and there's a lot of buzz around it. I, I think the fact of the matter is, is no one actually knows. I, I, yeah. I have a guess. It's not really a hypothesis, it's just a guess. Sure. But um, we, we, I use the data from um, ammunition manufacturers and, spe- and Sammy Specs and that sort of stuff to design the muzzle brake. And actually what I found is that the differences in the amount of gas produced by both the 22LR and 22WMR are very, very similar, which is why my brake works equally well on a 22LR and WMR. So we, we, need to, we need to do some work on it. We need to do some testing. We need to, we need to video it because it would be very interesting. Yeah. I just want to give a quick shout out to, to Richie Bray. Um, you're more than welcome when it's a bit warmer to come down to Bluefield Sports. We'd be more than happy to give you an introduction to practical shooting. Um, and of course, we, we definitely need to meet up and, and continue following your journey um, to, uh, to the Paralympics. Uh, so. Oh no, that's but yeah. So big, big uh, shout out to to, to Richie Bray. Um, of course, you can go and see Richard on Gumroom TV. We went and did a, a video with him um, about his uh, his air rifle shooting, um, and also I believe a friend of his we interviewed at the Target Shooting Show, uh, which was John Walker, who's a double Paralympic gold medalist. Um, very interesting guy. A great interview as well. But what Connors has just gone and got. So what do I think of a Smith & Wesson M&P 15? Oh, you just say 15, not 1522. M&P, yeah, so put it back. It's not, it's not a 15. No, but I've got it out now. If, if you're talking about the 15, an M&P 1522, it is, in our humble opinion, the best 22 AR on the market. Hands down, for price, performance, reliability, it just, it, it can't be beaten. Um... Uh, MP15, I just I don't have an opinion because I've never shot one. The 15. Well, the, the 15, so the 15 being the, two, two, the 223 yep. bigger brother. But in terms of the uh, 1522, I, I just don't think it can I, be I, I would not put as much development and time into it if I didn't think it was the gun to go for. Mm-hmm. And it is the gun to go for. I mean, it's soon... It's soon approaching not being a 1522 anymore. No, this gun's like pretty much stock, isn't it? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but I've, I've shot a 1522 for. How come you get your yellow muzzle brake before I get my blue one? Because he made it? Because it's my muzzle brake. <laughs> I can make it whatever colour I want. I want my one. But we've, um, you know, I, I've been shooting a 1522. When I, when I for... do the next round of that colour, I've got uh, one ready to make for you, so. Um, I've, I've been shooting 1522 for like 
six, seven years now. Mine is still going strong, although dropping a new trigger in it made it a little bit unhappy. But it's it's back up and I running think now. There's a hammer height issue. To yeah, do with so I'd, I'd lusted after a CMC trigger for mine for years and years. Finally got one and had a load of reliable. <laughs> oh, he's just going <laughs> <so easy. laughs> to pay more attention to my own flipping gun. He, uh, he had no, a no, no, no. I've got a yellow, yellow, yellow magro. Have a, cl- go, go, have, go, go, have a go, 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 but don't say anything. Um, and oh, you, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I dropped the CMC in it, had loads of reliability issues with it. Um, but what I'm aiming for now is what Connor's actually has in his, which is an AR Gold, and it is by far the best trigger I have ever, so, ever I, used. I come from a um, Olympic target shooting background, and I am very used to very nice triggers, and AR triggers have disappointed me thoroughly. Every mm-hmm. single trigger, trigger I've tried has been utterly horrible, except this one. It's still not perfect, but it's tweakable, and I've done some tweaks on it, and it is now pretty much perfect. There's a couple mm-hmm. more things to do. Wait, to again, it. yours is... Is, is a speed gun, it's a speed steel gun. Yeah. Whereas I have mine configured more for mini rifle. So, you know, I've got the, the one to six um, Razor HD on it and you can whack it up to six, shoot at 50, 100 yards, absolutely no problem with it. It is a lot heavier and, can, you know, I've, I've used Connor's at speed steel match and I've used mine pretty much side by side. Yeah, he, he was losing to me up until he started using yeah. my gun. It, and, and the gun, the, this gun in this configuration is absolutely fantastic. So fast. And it's so light. It is just, it is so, so light, ridiculously I love light. It. I love this um, And you're going to do, I believe, some more modifications to make it even lighter. Yes. Um, but just to, to clear up, the, the noise a minute ago, um, Connors and I had been playing around with one of Alex's guns, and I don't think he's very pleased with the modifications that we did to it. But <laughs> that's, that's what we're, we're no, saying. No, 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 no take back, <laughs> I want that off my gun. Oh, sorry. He's really not happy. Why is my red dot so far back? Oh, so first of all, before I answer that question, someone asked how much is one of these. So the base gun is, is 550 from Bluefield Sports? Yeah. 15, 22? Yep. Yeah. So 550 from Bluefield Sports, a bit more expensive other places because they don't love you so much. Um, <laughs> and actually, you can outfit with it with all the Magro bits and pieces. I think it's... Some, 120 quid? I'll say 160 if you want to put a break on oh, it. Oh, yeah, well. yeah, yeah. Um, it's not including the handguard, but the handguard is just a... Still in development anyway. Mm-hmm. Well, you've been saying that um, for the last six months, but because I, I want one. I know. Um, um, but yeah, you yeah. know, I can make you one like right now, right? Go. <laughs> um, <laughs> but the, yes, they they are the very cheap yeah. guns, and and this this is why, like I I understand it, it's polymer, it's plastic. People don't like that. It's originally, a race gun. originally I wanted the HK four one six, but in terms of the way this functions, the reliability, it cannot be beaten. Yes, if you want something that feels a little bit more proper. It is going to, um, you know, you're going to be looking at a Chris or a Northwest Custom Parts. Um, you know, they, they are a lot, mm-hmm. you know, you know, they're metal construction. But if you want to go and win competitions, all of the top mini rifle shooters in the UK shoot a yeah. 1522. That so answers it for me. So the next question, why is my red dot so far back? Okay. So um, as we mentioned, this gun is currently set up for speed steals. Um, in speed steals, you are not shooting a target any further away than about 10-15 meters so the reason why so red dots are made to be held out sort of at pistol distance right so that's where they have the least parallax error however when you're shooting speed still the targets are so close the parallax error really doesn't matter mm-hmm. so the idea of having the dot this far back and i have many people criticize me for this but it works for me is as soon as i bring the gun up the red dot fills as much of my field of vision as is possible and I can acquire the dot much more quickly rather than it being out here where I'd have to hunt for it a bit more. I can bring the gun up and even if it's not mounted properly, as long as I can see the dot, I can start pulling the trigger. Mm-hmm. So that's why I have it. And, and I say this all the time with shooting, don't always listen to everyone else. Like no. Everyone has an opinion and everyone will tell you how stupid you're being and the way you're doing mm-hmm. it. If it works for you and you get on with, well with it, yeah. Just ignore everyone else. This 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 works for me, and um, judging by the last set of speed steel results, I think I'm not going really to complain too much about it. Absolutely. Um, and and a, a quick question that probably you can answer, Connors: mm-hmm. Can a non FAC supernova be easily changed to an FAC one? Yes, any okay. competent gunsmith can do it for you, provided you have your FAC and your slot for it. Yeah. Most most um, section two shotguns. You, you know, we still haven't cleaned this since the. Burn test. Oh dear. 
very it's dirty. Just, it's very dirty. Uh, but but most, <laughs> most guns, um, uh, or most semi-autos or, or pump guns can be converted to FAC. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, apart like, from Remington 870s and 1100s, they yeah. yeah, Remington 870s yes. and 1100s can't. Um, have you got your trigger pull gauge somewhere yeah. handy? So someone's asked what the pull weight on this trigger is. Now, okay. pull weight isn't everything, because you want some... On an AR-15, you need to have a certain weight for the disconnector to be able to reset the trigger, and you want to be able to feel um, the trigger resetting. Also, what matters on a trigger is the crispness and the cleanness of the pull, mm-hmm. where it breaks. Is it a consistent, sharp reset that you can feel? However, Alex is going to bring over a trigger gauge, because this is still an extremely light trigger, despite all of what I've just said. Um, and in the meantime, I'm going to... A quick question uh, from uh, Bradley John Hunt. Uh, what safes do you recommend for under 300 quid? Well, actually, 300 quid is a it's pretty a lot good for a safe. budget for a, for a safe. And I would say, hands down, Bratton Sound. I have yeah. two of their safes. They For 300 quid, you can get pretty much any of their range. Uh, a fairly big one. I would um, say get get the one with the internal ammo safe as well. It just gives you more am- ammunition. Oh yeah, the internal ammo safe is a must. Yeah. Absolute must. Um, but I've got, uh, both of them are actual safes, so they have cabinets versus safes. I would go for the safe because it is much more secure. Mm-hmm. Your, your FEO is not going to have a problem with them at all. Um, I've, well again, I've had mine for like, you know, seven, eight years. It's, they've never let me down, never broken. I bought one second hand, one brand new. Um, yeah, they're uh, absolutely fantastic. So yeah, Bratton Sound. There are other ones, um, but you know you can. Uh, there's a site. I can't remember the website, but there's a, there's a website that sells Bratton Sound. I'm sure if you uh, Google Bratton Sound UK, it will come up, um, and you can have it delivered to your door. Push ready. Okay. It's a new one, so I'm not entirely sure. Let's works. have a look. So push and ready and pull. Uh, two pounds three ounces try that again I'm not, I'm not too sure well that was one pound I was going to say it didn't feel like a two pound maybe, trigger. Maybe, maybe you should just leave it if you um, we'll make a video on Connor's trigger trigger weight yes it, it's, it's about one pound 1.5 ounces it's a it's a very light trigger and it's yeah. it's super super fast the first time I, I had a go with it the the speed of shots you could you could take with it it's just absolutely phenomenal highly recommend the AR gold they are a little it's difficult. expensive they're hard yeah. to get hold of but Worth definitely it. the the um yeah no so it was coming out consistently they're about one and point one five so Alex Cox has asked a question which I'm sure is going to cause uh, an argument uh, vortex or shield well I'm, shield. I'm gonna say vortex no it depends on what you're talking about if it's a red dot shield obviously because they don't make a they don't make a, a telescopic optic however up until very recently I have not seen a better scope than a razor HD yeah it, the, the it, again course. it comes down to personal opinion go and look at both of them because there, there are yeah. people that will highly dis- disagree with Connors, there are mm-hmm. people that will highly agree with Connors, and again, vice versa with me. It's about what you like. I think you really can't go wrong with a Vortex, you, you really can't go wrong with a Shield, it's just down to what you find so the best for you. I like the Shield sight because, mainly because the lens is clear. I find I don't like tinted lenses. I mean, for one, I'm very unusual in that when I shoot, I almost always shoot with clear lenses. Maybe something I'll talk about another time, the reasons why. Um, I, I used to work a lot with colour filters when I did Olympic three position shooting, and I know what each of the filters does, mm-hmm. and I choose to use clear, so I wanted a clear dot. The other thing was um, the automatic adjustment of brightness. Mm-hmm. Um, but the main thing is the clear lens, and no one else does a clear lens for a good reason because the dot isn't so. You lose a lot of the red light of the dot when you have a clear lens, so the dot is harder to pick up at times. But for me, I'm willing to pay that price. Um, the other thing is it okay dry firing with 1522 like I am? So I think you take that as a yes. Really, really common misconception is that if you dry fire a 22, it will break. An old 22. Yes, if you dry fire a 2.2, what will happen is you'll actually you'll peen over 
the edge of the chamber and make extraction a problem. A lot of tutus will extract under blowback, not necessarily using the extractor. However, most modern guns from like 1975 onwards, but do check your manual, can be dry fired. The reason is, is manufacturers recognise that there was an issue with firing pins peening over the uh, edge of a chamber and they built firing pin stops into the firing pins. 1522 is one of those guns. One of the first guns to put that into production was actually the Ruger 1022. You can dry fire one of those all day long. Now famously these do have issues with firing pins breaking. I'm going to put that down to actually heat treatment with the firing pin. Mm -hmm. Looking at where it's breaking, it's not breaking in a position that would make any difference whether it was dry firing or live firing. I think it's important to add to, to not take it for granted. Always, you know, any gun, yeah. don't don't just go and dry fire the life out of it. You know, well, and you say about modern guns, there's the, the new CZ, well, CZ clone, CZ copy mm -hmm. um, long barrel pistol. They had two on display, I think the only two in existence mm -hmm. um, at the target shooting show. And they said that they were buggered basically because people were dry firing them all throughout the weekend. So a, a modern gun that again, didn't, didn't take well to dry yeah. fire. So never assume. never assume. And if it's somebody else's gun, always check. Yeah. You know, always ask. It's, it's just know, cur it's courtesy. Yeah. I know there is, I've been talking to a top level shooter with his M&P, mm -hmm. who um, despite me sort of assuring him that if he breaks it, I will buy him a new titanium one, yeah. um, still refuses to dry fire his yeah. gun. It's personal preference, so if it's someone else's gun, do ask. I, th I think um, it's like, you know, in a way you could liken it to leaning against someone's car. Like yeah. most people aren't going to care. Some people are going to throw an absolute connection fit. So, and you don't know. draw on the back of Callum's car, especially yes, not please. on the plastic part of the windshield where it scratches in permanently and forever. Yes, because I will catch up the shit out of your car. Um, um, uh, so I've got yeah. uh, uh, Homan uh, Connors. i got an email confirming you've posted my Magload goodies. Can't wait to get them on the gun. So, of course, I think on the last stream, it was actually the launch of... It was the launch of Black Friday. Yeah. Um, now, we did put on all the adverts for Black Friday that your order will be entered into a queue. Yeah. Um, so, we do thank anyone who's ordered for their patience for those. I think we haven't had a single person complain about the wait times. Mm -hmm. And we're still shipping orders because there were a, a lot of orders. <laughs> and it's a very big queue. Yeah. Um, every, everyone at Magload has been working that absolute asses off to yeah. get to get things out i think the majority of orders have now been shipped there are still um, orders left yes, to go out there are um, yep. so there there are uh, originally i wanted to get all orders shipped by the end of this week unfortunately there are still some orders mm -hmm. because we it went so well we've had to put stuff more stuff into manufacture than we yep. already had in manufacture for black friday yeah so there's a bit of a wait it's, on a few a bit, a bit of a catch-up but um i think yeah. tomorrow there'll be a load of more orders going out um, yep. And certainly by buddy, well next week mm -hmm. they should all be out and all caught yes. up. So again, as Connor said, thank you very much for all of your patience, and we very much hope that you enjoy your parts. Yeah. So, um, so Aaron, I'm ex I'm just excited. I'm going to be on TV for my first comp. Well, again, that's what we're saying. Yeah. It's so it's so great that um, it's going to be televised and it's going to go out to. Um, to the wider audience. Yeah. Um, Hotshot 83, um, general election exit polls out very soon. Mm -hmm. Yep, eagerly, uh, so the first thing after the stream, I'm gonna be going and, and watching those. I think, not just guns aside, but you know, for our country as a whole, it's an incredibly vital election and, and what happens in the next few months is gonna be, well, it's gonna really set, I think, the next decade in, in motion. Um, but it has, it's been two hours and we try yeah. to keep these to two hours and, uh, you know, I'm sure we could go on for uh, a lot longer. Yeah, but I, think I, I know there are more questions coming through, but yeah. we, we've got to wrap it up and we've got to wrap it up. Yeah, uh, I just want yeah. to say it's, it's a really small thing. I know a number of you already have, uh, but there's a little like button below. <laughs> it really helps the stats for the channel um, and this video. If it doesn't help me, it just helps him. Yeah, yeah, just, yeah who cares about him? Um, go on to maglo.co.uk if you want to help him. <laughs> um, but I'd really Press appreciate... like on his thing. It'll stop him whinging. Oh, my yeah. God, does he go on in the morning after? <laughs> You're one to talk. Yeah. Um, <laughs> just the, the hit the thumbs up button. It really helps with the channel and the, and the stats. Um, and if you're watching this and you're not already subscribed, 
please, of course, subscribe. But there we go, guys. Thank you very much for tuning in, and thank you, as always, for Connors for putting up with me. And, and, it, and it's being a hard here task, I have to admit. <laughs> he's, he's more the calm and balanced person here. And a, <laughs> and a big thanks to, to Alex for running the stream behind. Yep. Uh, you might hear him occasionally, but he's very camera shy. Uh, but he does sit there for the, for the full two hours. Yep. But yes, thank you, everyone, for joining. Thank you all for your your questions and for joining in. The next stream will be in two weeks' time, which I believe is actually Boxing Day. So it's going to be a Christmas oh, special. Christmas um, and so I think fast. we're already planning about talking um, about the year to come and the year yep. ahead. Yep. Uh, so we're going to maybe reveal a few plans for next year, which are going to be some quite new products. Yeah, new products. I'm, I'm undecided. New videos. There, there, there may or may not be something very big coming next year. Uh, yep, yeah, that could be a very interesting one. So, yes, thank you very much, guys, for ju uh, joining, tuning in. I uh, hope you really enjoyed it. And as always, hope to see you soon.